and welcome to the War Report. I am your host, Cyrus, joined by Quan. This is a show where we talk about NXT and AEW. And in Sexy We Trust. We do. We really do. What's going on, man? Not that much. Uh, nothing's really going on. I'm just living. Uh, I would just like to talk about some things because, you know, I ain't really had much to say these past couple of weeks, but um, one, I'm on this new game called uh, Bellatro, or Bellatro, depending on who you're talking to in what country. Mm-hmm. It is a roguelike poker game. You get all these cool little jokers and modifiers and stuff like that, and then you try to like, I guess like outdo the casino, I guess, or whatever. Hmm. I, I I don't. You 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 explain that, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't. I I think I have this something I have to see. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand that. Because if you don't know what the roguelike genre is, you're gonna be like, well, "What the fuck is that?" But, yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware of what a roguelike okay. is. I'm just trying to figure out like what is. How do you do that with poker? So basically, the based on your poker hands is like the score, and like you have to like. The, the score cap keeps getting like higher and higher and then mm-hmm. you know your jokers you know your modifiers or whatever you're basically your power-ups like adds more to the score modifier um mm. okay that's as that's that is as best it's gonna get <laughs> <laughs> maybe i gotta youtube it I, I'm, not, I'm not aware too aware of that that's interesting I am a is it is it is it like a mobile game or is it like a what is it what's, what the platform is it on it's on steam and I wish it was a mobile game could it be a, a mobile game yes and that's the worst part because if you go on the uh if you go on the what is it the app store right now and you type in Balatro, you mm. will get a Balatro clone oh that has the exact same mechanics Mm-hmm. The exact same like uh boosters and power ups and all that, but they know that Bellatro is a real thing already, and they're working on a mobile version right now. Okay. So they're just like, you could play a couple games right now. So like basically the app is free, but it's a free trial. Gotcha. And it's like, hey man, you could give us two dollars right now. You could keep playing until the mo uh, until like the you know the real game comes out on mobile. Yeah, trying to just capitalize off people's fix for the game. Oh yeah, man, if I can get it online. I mean, I'm Dog. on the phone. Then. <laughs> Dog, I was scratching at my neck, bro. Oh, I was like, it's, God. it's so, it's like, what is it? It's only two dollars for the month. See, that's how they get you. I'm like, oh, I can't do it, bro. But like, this is probably one of my uh, like favorite games going on right now that i'm back on the mm. divers i'm having uh i know a lot of people are like uh well like i'd be on tiktok and shit and a lot of people are down on hell divers right now but like it's a really fun just like pick up and play and, you know pick up drop pick up drop type shit you know i go in do like six missions get off that's not bad those are long those i mean minimum like 20 minutes each like yeah hour, in, <laughs> hour play time in something like that yeah, uh, I guess like three campaigns, I guess, is like more of like, the, well, like each campaign is like three missions. So, uh, yeah, no, nah, I do that and bow out. That's it. Um, summertime is coming, so we are going to get a lot more gaming, you know, release dates, news and stuff like that. But right now, Balatro, hard. <laughs> When I'm not playing Balotro, I'd be asking myself, damn, when can I play Balotro? Can I get back on? <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck all that nerd poker fucking roguelike shit. Look, we back. I, I feel like I'm back in 2007, 2008, 2010 days, right? There's a, there's a uh, new first, first person shooter that just came out recently. Um, very much a Call of Duty clone made by developers of one of the one of the Black Ops game. It's called X Defiant, made by Ubisoft. Um, um it's free to it's a free to play um it's a free to play first person shooter. And I haven't 
I haven't really been like back in the day. I used to I used to play like first person shooters heavy, like most kids did, and just played like um, you know, all the Call of Duty, Modern Warfare two, three, Black Ops, all of them joint. So this is mm-hmm. the closest thing I've played to one in a long time, and I um. It's its whole appeal is that it's there's no skill based matchmaking. So like if people who aren't aware of what skill based matchmaking is like skill based matchmaking, basically you get put in a lobby with players that are just like you, which in concept sounds like it should be good. However, it makes every single game you play sweaty as fuck. You have to go full on MLG. You better have the fucking special controller with little paddles on the back, all that shit. Like you can't. <laughs> You can't you can't go up in there casuals. So mm-hmm. with X Defiant, it's a lot more relaxed. You don't have to be sweaty every game. Some lobbies you're in, niggas do be sweating, but some lobbies and you'll just go in there and dominate. So I, I really appreciate that. It brings me back to kind of like my high school days. And also sports games. I haven't played a lot of sports games in years just because I don't really like where sports games are headed. However, mm-hmm. FIFA was free or EA, EA Sports FC was free free to play this month so i've been playing that a lot also it's really gotten me into soccer or, or football but that's another conversation for another day but mm-hmm. we got an update on ncaa football 25 when i tell you i haven't been this excited for a video game probably since like destiny 2 maybe <laughs> one hell of an endorsement yeah no i mean college football i played so much Whatever the last one was, 2014, I think. I think I played that so much. Like, hours. It's probably one of my most... Like If I were to, like, count the hours, it's probably one of my all-time, like, most played games ever. Um, So I'm just really excited for a new new version of it. And from the previews, it looks really, really good. It doesn't look, look like a Madden clone, so I'm really excited for that because I don't like the current Maddens. So we'll see. I mean, I'm going to buy it anyway just because it's NCAA football, and we've been waiting for a new one for a decade now, so... They already got my money. I'm gonna pre-order it when I get paid tomorrow. So, okay, it is what it is. It is what it is at this point. It could be bullshit. I'm still playing it. Um, I I don't know what to really expect from sports games. Like the last time I played like a sports game was like 2K something with Mark and J5 and NBA 2K. I am not going to be that guy that is going to make the build, be on this game daily, you know, try to grind, buying VC, oh, that and all shit that cost, sort of stuff. That shit costs two hundred dollars to make a fucking player. I don't, I don't play that shit. Yeah, bro. taxing and crazy. T- 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 a very taxing game. Also, these controls are getting way too much for a nigga, bro. Oh man, you can't handle the controls. Little two buttons. Nigga, I two, wish two to, combo I, buttons. You know what I mean? I, Press LB and Y I or wish, triangle. I, w- I wish 2K was only two buttons, bro. Oh my god! Yeah, I gold, wish it man. was. I wish it was. My nigga, there's like, there's 80 ways how to dribble now. You could, uh, what is it? You could, which I appreciate. Like, you could do the Euro step and shit like that now. But like, you know, that comes with like. A combination of buttons, bro. And in the heat of the moment, I'm really just like, hey, bro, pass me the ball. I'm gonna shoot this three, bro. Nigga, go go right. for a layup. Absolutely not. N- nigga, in the game, you could do the uh, what is it? The, uh, the dribble behind the back. Nigga, I'm never gonna remember that tutorial, bro. I did I think I did the tutorial twice on like how to dribble. As soon as I got into a game with Mark and uh Justin, I completely forgot everything, bro. I feel like it's one of the, one of those things like when you like play a fighting game, you gotta remember a couple moves. Don't try to remember them all. And you should yeah. be good to go. Just do the like, most effective ones, a little like, stutter steps and shit. And then like yeah, for two K, all you could do is like really dribble and you know do the thing like that. But like niggas really know how to play the game. You feel me? Like, I, I, like man, shit. If I'm putting two hundred dollars in VC. On a character, yeah, I'm gonna be on that shit all day. I'm gonna know every fucking move and every exploit and cheat. Yeah, that you feel me? I'm going to YouTube, find every the best build, the cheesiest builds I can do. Mark, Mark, Mark was like, let let's hit my part, my nigga. I don't even have a character. You you got you got the uh, the player with the, the gray sweatpants and the brown t shirt. I I didn't I didn't I didn't make my <laughs> I didn't make my dream nigga in the game the, yet. Like, the default the default fit. <laughs> the default fit, yeah. Yeah, you get a little gray the gray sweatpants with the brown like you fresh out of jail. You just got out right to, right to the court. Yeah, like no, uh, 
those shits are be beyond me, bro. I don't I don't know what to uh do. I can't I, I can't I can't do the uh the NBA two Ks, bro. Um, yeah, I gave up on two K. Shit, I can't support two K twelve. Two K twenty might have been the last one I got. Twenty two K nineteen. It's been a while I, since I bought two K. Whatever was the last one to drop on PSN was like the one that I caught. That was probably last year's then, right? Or twenty two K twenty two, I think like it was. It, I, I I did get that one on PSN. Yeah, I think like it was two K twenty two. Yeah, it was PS Plus. So. Yeah, I think it was two K twenty two. I did. I, I didn't like it, so I was happy I didn't pay for that. I would say it was yeah. fun for like you know a few couple nights and shit like that. Like uh, you know, Mark got the highlights and all that sort of shit. Like that was fun, but like once <laughs> once that was over with. <laughs> Yeah, get the shit off my uh get the shit off my PS5 right now. Um and then that's it. Um yo, before we get into it, I had the craziest dream last night. Yeah. It it the dream almost feels like it happened. Like I'm kind of like I've been thinking about it all day like what if this happened? It sounds far fetched, right? So like in my dream, I woke up and I looked to my side, and it was like a dark, like mysterious figure. Like I couldn't see their face or anything like that. Oh, the but hat it man. Looked, nah, it wasn't. I don't think it was the hat man, though, right? Because this is listen, right? Dude okay, had on like hold on, hold on. so people that don't know who the hat man is. It's a person. <laughs> it's quote unquote the person you see when you take too much Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, I was on no. I was on no kind of drugs last night. So right. So. The dude, he looked pretty tall, so maybe low key it might have been the hat man. I don't know, but he had on like a brown like trench coat style, like on some like Dick Tracy shit, and had like a little fucking detective hat style too, right? And then, um, he had like one of those old school like cameras with a really really big bulb on it, like you know, like you know what I'm talking about, the one like the bright flash, like a flash bang in your face. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me in my dream, bro. I swear, like he took a picture of me while I was lying down. And I like I looked up at him like you. You ever see those pictures of like the you Uber sure Eats? You sure this wasn't the hat man, bro? I don't know what the fuck it was, but I was like I. It felt so real, dog. But it was like the, the huge bulb on this old school camera. It was so strange, bro. I don't know, man. It was really weird. Yeah, you met the hat man. That's I, okay I just, though. We we all knew the hat man. I need time. to Google. I need to Google that. Getting your picture taken while you're in bed. I felt. Hey, man. Come on, man. I'm just, just in my underwear, like, on some, like, OnlyFans shit. Like, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> what the fuck I, was the last part of that tangent, bro? I, bro, because I was in my underwear. I was asleep. And nigga took a picture of me. Mm. Freaky ass dream. <laughs> right. <laughs> right ass bulb, man. Yeah, we gonna get you out of here. I don't know what that was, but yeah, it was very, very strange. And I'm almost like, yo, did that really happen, bro? Someone sneak in and take a picture of me? You got the, you, you got the, you got the freaky hat, man. I don't, uh, I don't know how. <laughs> I got the, I got, but... the, I got the freak variant. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Freak variant of the hat, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, though, yeah, you definitely got the, uh, you got the freaky hat, Jimmy. You got the freaky oh, hat. Oh no. I need to see it. You want but, to do you, you want to do a quick Google search? No, I'll, all right. What's that Google search? Um, photo taken in dream. Okay, photo taken in dream. Meaning, dreams of a photograph represent a significant memory or a person from your past, or your desire to remember an important occurrence. But I don't know if that means I just like I saw a picture in my dream, but I need like a picture like or like a a, a me getting my picture taken. I don't know. I have to look it up. But yeah, that's what I've been dreaming about, I guess. Wait, the description said Can you can you read I, that one more time? We're gonna decipher. I, it I, I literally just read the Google on top. It said dreams of a photograph represent a significant memory or a person from your past. Or your desire to remember an important occurrence. No, you're just trying to remember some shit that's uh, blockaded. 
I was I okay. Shit. I got shit repressed, man. Damn. I need to go see a therapist. Mm, I don't think that this is a <laughs> therapist going to look at you crazy. No, nah, I'm sure they've heard worse. I'm sure they've heard oh, yeah, the wild sure. shit. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. They'd be like, hey man, so uh, I've been seeing the hat man lately. <laughs> it wasn't the hat man. Did the hat man wear a black, like a brown trench coat? He did have a hat on. That is true. That that man did have a hat on. I think you. <laughs> that you man said, did have a hat on. I ain't You lie. said, I don't think it was the hat man. It described <laughs> what a hat man is. That's crazy. I thought it was like a. Well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was hat man. Damn. Hat man got me. Like Freddy Krueger. What the fuck? Lucky he ain't doing anything to you, bro. He did. He violated me. He took a picture. Without my consent. Anyway. I don't, we're getting I don't, the churches? I, 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 we're getting the churches. Get your photo taken. You'd be like, ah, no photos. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I didn't ask for that. In my, in my know, briefs? Moving like a Karen, bro. If a nigga took a picture in your briefs? Without your consent, you're not gonna be upset about that. I'd be a little upset. That's a violation. Mm. In a compromised position, at that. Kill nice to spray in the air, really. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like I was on my, like I was like kind of on my side. I don't know. Let's get in the trenches. Yeah, let's get in these trenches. Uh, let's, let's some real, tra- uh, some real trauma. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. AEW. Mm. Hit, hit, hit me off. I, and this first report, I feel like we've like heard and seen this like many times. This this is something Alvarez has brought up multiple times. To summarize it, um, AEW previously was a really fun place to work at. Very kind of like, you know, everybody's happy to be here type shit. Um, we're happy to be a part of the team. A lot of camaraderie. However, recently it's been more of a more chaotic environment. Uh, last minute write ups, people not knowing what they're doing when they get there. Um, just people not getting time that they thought they would get. Um, mm. Yeah, just a lot. Of, just a lot of things that we've heard before from Alvarez. Not even Alvarez. You can go further back to that Big Swole interview four mm-hmm. years ago. Where she kind of spoke on, you know, sometimes we get there, we don't know what we're doing, which is understandable to a degree. Um, but if it's like that every week where you just don't know what you're, you're just you're just flying in, sit yeah. around <laughs> and do nothing, yeah, it'd be kind of hot too about it. But yeah, a lot of wrestlers have reached out to Brian Alvarez. Um, but yes, I mean, they straight up Alvarez straight up says booking from show to show. And people like people can say that it's BS or whatever, but I mean, all you gotta do is watch the show. It don't feel like it's connected. Oh yeah, from very, show to show, very disjointed. Maybe, like I, I, Alvarez spoke on it. Actually. He's like, it, it, sometimes it works from week to week, but like, Dynamite doesn't lead into Rampage and Collision. It may no, lead into all, next week Dynamite. They're all in their own universe, which is just yeah. Like, so that's like why... loosely though, but it's like cause they do it sometimes, but then other times just like nothing, like. Yeah, so that's why, like, sometimes you'll tell me, like, something happened on, like, Rampage, and then, like, suddenly it's on a pay-per-view. How like, how am I supposed to know about this? <laughs> and then you don't With no hear... no kind of, like, video package or nothing like that. Yeah, you don't hear yeah. about it on Dynamite. And then, by the time I hear about it on Dynamite, it's probably, uh well, like, if I hear about a Rampage feud that is happening, or, like, you know, pieces of it are happening on Dynamite... Sometimes it is like, was it like the climax of that feud or like, you know, like the final action of that feud, like before it goes into the pay-per-view and I'd be like, what was that about? And he'd be like, oh, they've been fighting on Rampage for a little bit. Been fighting for two months. <laughs> this is yeah. the best of seven series. Yeah. Like, no. Uh, how was I supposed to know this? Yeah. It, it, no, the report, it, it sounds very much like late late stage Vince McMahon peak like 2020 or not 2020 maybe after that 2021 mm-hmm. where we would get a lot of reports about him like changing shit last minute mm-hmm. and changing finishes um it sounds a lot like that and we saw how you know that kind of era of WWE went a lot of times storylines would get dropped their storylines wouldn't make as much sense or like weren't as well thought out and I feel like 
the current programs AEW's has right now is kind of in that era where just like we're just doing shit. Maybe like maybe like long term plans he has an idea for for the pay per views or whatever, but mm-hmm. week to week, I think it's showing. I think and I think is it adds to the attendance, the lower ratings, those things. I think we're not engaged. It's like it's not engaging right now because we can't sink our teeth into anything because we don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Um, I like, I think like, I, I just want to like hit this right now. And it's just like, I think the difference between like WWE being like, okay, we're not going to tell you what the finish of the match is until you get to the curtain. Like, I think that mitigates a lot of like disaster or like, you know, a lot of possible like disagreement or whatever. But with this, it's like, I want to at least know what I'm doing when I come to work. Yeah, the bare really. that'd be nice. Yeah, I don't I don't need to be told to finish, but at least because I saw people making that kind of excuse too. Sorry to cut your idea, but like, no, 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 no. Bro. People were just like, oh, well, Jerry Lynn said because everything kept leaking, but I'm like, that's fine. We don't need to know that stuff, but I'm just saying like the wrestlers should know if they're working or not. Or if they need yeah. to be there. Otherwise, I feel like you're just wasting everybody's time. You're wasting your Bro. own money flying them in. And you're wasting the wrestler's time for even having to come in in the first place. Yeah, the, that and then also it's just like, okay, if you're going to tell me that I'm going to have a promo, you know, at the start of the show, I have a lot more time to prepare, probably workshop yeah, yeah. some stuff. Like, you know, maybe a lot of these segments will go go a lot better if people just knew what the fuck they were doing. Very, yeah, I agree very much. It's a good point. That's it. Like, I I do think like it's kind of just like bad television to uh, or just uh, just bad work environment type stuff to like got to do that sort of thing. Like, just not let people know what they're doing uh, on the show. And I kind of just unproductive, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't think uh, I don't think that. Excuse me. I just don't think it's smart to. Uh, be moving that way, but when does AEW do smart things? Yeah. More AEW news. Speaking of uh people not knowing what's going on, Megan Bain. Uh we haven't spoke much about Megan Bain on the podcast, I don't believe. <laughs> There's not uh, much think, to say. I, I think we spoke on when she was initially signed or rumored to be signed. Yeah. And then that that felt like that was like a year ago, damn near at this point. Yeah, because uh, with her signing, there was a lot of drama, but like uh, with the Rosie thing, just being like they signed her just so like WWE couldn't have her or like all sorts of shit. And I'm just like, well, let's just see what they do. And we never saw what they do. Yeah, I feel like every like three months we get a new report saying, yeah, she signed and they're looking for things to do with her. But that's it. it- <laughs> It's been that, and like we got it again uh, the other day, where they were just like, "Yeah, she signed," um, and they're making creative pitches for her re debut. So I'm just like, "What has she been doing this whole time?" I don't believe she has been working, right? And she's still working um, stardom. I couldn't tell you, bro. Mm, I'm gonna check on uh, Cage Match real quick. Megan Bain. Hey, I you, do remember her like you working. Gonna, okay. You gonna see she on ROH? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I do remember her working like the pandemic era, like uh, rampage. I mean, like darks and rampages and shit. That's why I remember seeing her for the first time. Let me see what she's been doing. Um, she's been working GCW. Okay, so she's working indies, not Stardom anymore. Uh, last time Super Stardom was in April. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really. I wonder. <laughs> Let's do something with the young lady, man. Yeah, I feel like this would be a good time. Um, to get her on the show, always have more women. Uh. On the show, because so we don't have to rotate the same five. Because for some reason he doesn't want to use anybody from Ring of Honor, like full time on the on the main shows. I don't. Cause they have a, they got mad women down there, Red Velvet down there chilling. Why is Red Velvet now on TV? Yeah, and I feel like Red Velvet has gotten a lot better. So I'm just yeah, like, she's cool. good. No, she's she's like genuinely good. <laughs> yeah, and she's just not on the show. I don't. 
it's very um it's very strange like the women he chose to kind of gravitate towards. Like I would love to know the reasoning he chose the girls he chose. Um, I feel like you know what I mean. Like, no, I feel I really feel like there's no rhyme or reason for like yeah, any like you know like when like Vince was pushing Lacey Evans, we understood why Vince was pushing Lacey Evans. You know what I mean? The, well, the, the well, nastier, well. the nastier as it was, <laughs> we know the reason why he was pushing Lacey Evans. With Tony Khan, I just don't I don't know what his motive is. I don't feel like he's like a looks guy or like or like a, a kind of. I don't think appearance is really like a big a big I, deal for him. So I feel like booking the women is like someone else's job. Honestly, it must like be entirely. Yeah, I don't know. It's strange. Uh, hopefully, we see Megan Bain too. I do. I do really like her look. Speaking of look, like not not like on oh, no no freaky, but just like I like she like. No, I'll give us some freaky, bro. Just say, bro. It's not. No, it's not. I don't think she's. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't really think she's like attractive in that way. But um, I do really like her look. I, the whole like crown and kind of like. She looks like um who was that Elder Ring boss costume that was fighting for like twenty four hours, like that one. Uh, Melania. Melania, yeah, 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 that one. Okay. Yeah, I got that vibe. Um, you have any thoughts on Megan Maine? Have you seen her work or anything? No. Um, I kind of don't really understand what all the chatter is about. Like, if she's not like with AEW, um. The what are, like what are people really discussing when it comes to her? People could keep wanting to know where she's at. Like if she's like you know being, you know she's like on ice right now or whatever. I feel like there should be a little more heat going on here. Um, but people are just like, oh, she's not around. Oh, okay, there must be a good reason for that. And it's just like, I feel like y'all not putting the fire on Tony Khan ass. It's like. As much as I'd like, um, maybe right, maybe, it, maybe it's a situation where she got demand, but ain't that much demand. You feel me? Like people care, but not. Why sign her? I don't fucking know. Like, if you didn't really have any plans or wanted to do anything with Megan Bain, then it was just like, why try so hard to sign her? Or am I crazy? No, <laughs> maybe there's more to it than we don't know. But far we know she's signed, and we're waiting for her to show up. So Next up, <laughs> <laughs> like we we just kind of just have to like cross our fingers that she shows up at some point. You know, like that's that's not crazy, y'all. No. Nah. AEW think? AEW sources said that the first offer by Warner Brothers to AEW was. Was not disappointing to Tony Khan. Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. The wrong um thing. Initially, there was a report from uh Puck News. I'm not familiar with them, but I believe they're like credible and within like the uh TV media landscape. Mm-hmm. That Tony Khan sources told him that Tony Khan was pretty upset about the offer that he received from Warner Brothers as far as a new TV deal goes. Um, Tony Khan would reach out to Wrestle Observer saying that. No, he was not bothered by the offer, and they were still working on it, and there's still discussions. I believe Warner execs were at the Kia Forum show tonight. Mm, that was reported. Um, but I believe they go to all the LA shows. I could be wrong, though. But, um, yeah, so we're still kind of on that saga of what's going on with the TV deal, um, getting conf- conflicting reports. But the main reason I brought kind of brought this report up well, I, it was the timing of when this came out <laughs> and the reaction to the timing. Mm-hmm. So when when a big pay-per-view comes up for AEW, they start doing more press. There's more news coming out about AEW, what's going on over there, because it's a big event, it's double or nothing. Yeah. So, often, so sometimes minor critiques of the company get involved in that kind of reporting. Yeah. Around this time of a big pay per view, but the AEW standum has gotten to the point where if any negative news comes out, it's because there's a big pay per view coming, and they're trying to sabotage the pay per view. Well, Quan, who's trying to sabotage the big AEW pay per view coming up? They, them, 
the, the anybody who's against AEW, <laughs> the, the, the non the non binary folks against uh, <laughs> AEW, they the they them's are at it again. They don't want to see <laughs> AEW succeed. I um, don't either. <laughs> I just think well, it's so well, interesting that people are that? just like <laughs> people are just like there it goes another pay per view. They're trying to do another hit piece on AEW when they're just like. Why can't the news just be the news? Why does it have to be some kind of conspiracy? And I don't mm. want to get like super political on this thing, but it reminds me of like, well, no, like no. Trump, Trump, like Trump supporter. It, it gives very MAGA vibes. Yeah, when I when I saw somebody tweet, this was reported by an AEW. I mean, uh, a WWE friendly <laughs> thing. I was just like. Yeah, this is giving Q. Bro, it's... That was the most Q thing I ever heard. <laughs> like, when you look at the parallels, I don't like I don't know Tony Khan's politics, but, like, if you look at the parallels, like, Tony <laughs> Khan and Donald <laughs> Trump, it's very similar. Like, think about it, right? So, like, I'm why, did a- why did AEW become a thing in the first place? Because people were tired of the status quo what we've been seeing in wrestling for the last three decades or whatever, right? Yeah. Somewhere to kind of like the presidents have been in the last couple of decades. Trump is a whole new radical thing. Tony Khan's a whole new radical thing with his whole new radical idea. He has these very loyal followers. He doesn't take responsibility for shit. Similar to Donald mm-hmm. Trump. Mm-hmm. So y'all going here with this, right? And then like Yeah, it's getting scary. <laughs> now and now they're so loyal to him that he can't be wrong and everything must be a conspiracy to take take him down. Mm-hmm. And the way he frames things is the same way like Trump would do it. Like all the 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 uh the fake media is lying on me and what's going on. You can't trust them. You can't, you know what I mean? You can't trust well well renowned media, <laughs> media sorry, reporter yeah. <laughs> credited. No, he's clearly in WWE's pockets with uh Legento, like Legento, whoever that guy is over in WWE's PR, that's like their Dr. Fauci. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm gonna stop you right there. You cook it too much, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, gonna stop you like, right the, there. The parallels I'm, are crazy. It's getting scary, bro. Like, one of my favorite TikTok creators, bro, Spooky. Yo, you're making too much sense, and I'm gonna stop you, bro. <laughs> It's 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 lining up very scarily. And oh, I'm um, telling you, like I'm seeing this happen in real time. Like, yo, this is crazy. Everything the conspiracy. Every single thing. I AEW has gotten to a very like scary place. Um, or like uh well, like, it's gotten to a very scary place where, you know, even last year, like years prior, like, zero criticism could be made. Yeah. I think it's gotten a little better. Like, I think the first couple years, it was like, you couldn't say anything at all. I think I think even now the journalists are a little bit more like, okay, the honeymoon's over. Y'all, y'all are definitely on some bullshit. Yeah, like, e- even, even they're just like, Oh no, like dude, like it's not really working out. I th- it's gotten so crazy that I'm I'm pretty sure you saw the same tweet too, where dude said, I don't know if I can trust Meltzer on this. Yeah, I, I, I did see that. <laughs> they said that they cannot trust Dave Meltzer about AE on, on I'm scared, <laughs> bro. They turned they turned on Meltzer and um Alvarez, especially Alvarez. Like, is it not crazy how this is like, like, like not to really be like dramatic, but like y'all niggas not scared about this? Like this shit terrifies me. The way that like little people con- are like, a little concerning, a little culty. Like, th- this is the Q that they swear NXT still is, bro. People think NXT is the Q? Yes. Still. Like, black and, like, black and, like, black and yellow era? 
Yeah, they, like they 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 still they they still think like uh what is it? What was that nickname? D Derek Dwartz, Drake Dwartz, whatever. Ooh, oh, Drake Wurtz. <laughs> yeah, Drake Wurtz. Like they still think like he still has like an influence on like NXT and stuff like. Oh, he he's like influencing people to be Q. <laughs> yeah, real, real real Q. As like AEW fans, just slowly just made themselves Q. What's what's the wrestling equivalent? We gotta find a different letter. W, maybe W, W and on. W and on is crazy. Uh, we're just gonna call the <laughs> we're just gonna call you uh, AEW Knights, bro. Um, elitist. Yeah, basically, um, losers. Uh, I'm not I think <laughs> I'm not gonna call them losers. <laughs> I think if you say that you are part of the IWC, you should be investigated. Outright. Cyrus, we're 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 a part of the IWC. I'll never say it. Huh? <laughs> you won't admit it. <laughs> Y'all not my peoples. I'll say I'm I've I've been IWC for twenty years at this point. Y'all not my peoples. <laughs> you IWC um, too. Like. It's getting very scary out here, the way that people react to like news and all that sort of jazz. Um you know what a better uh thing? If you follow Rover, yeah. Ooh. Rover? Well, first of all, that man's a psychopath. <laughs> if you follow if you first if of you all, if you follow if you follow Rover, you must know a different language than I do because I can't even understand that guy, those guys' tweets, to be honest. <laughs> it don't even make sense. Yeah, if you follow Rover, yeah, you you are uh I you're under surveillance. I love when he like he'll like quote tweet something and like not even talk about the tweet. Like he'll just he'll talk have a whole different subject going on <laughs> on the quote tweet. I love when he does that. I'm like, where'd that even come from? He is um he's of a different mind. He pops in my he pops in my mentions every once in a while. Not not too. I don't follow him, but sometimes he'll find like one of my tweets get out to that side of Twitter, the weird the weird side. He'll he'll pop in and say some shit that I don't understand. Him I'm and sorry. that uh that Mongo ebooks guy, that weird dude. Yeah, the weirdo. Now, if you follow that guy, yeah, you're in too deep. You're in too deep. You are under. You don't like wrestling. <laughs> you're just here for some weird alternative reason. Oh. Yeah, no, that dude is um, uh, that dude's terrifying. <laughs> you seen us fro, bro? Scary yeah, stuff. I, I thought like a costume, like a costume fro or something like that. Not real, is it? I think it's real. Um, I think we're getting too deep into. It. I don't think people even know what we're talking about. It's it's a weird, weird. It's a weird side of wrestling Twitter. If you ain't seen it, you're lucky. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're you're lucky to not experience that. Oh, stay stay clear. It gets very scary out there. Um. Next, <laughs> that's it for the trenches, man. We can get into um. Oh, sure. We can hey, talk man. about double or nothing. Uh, um, man, can somebody at NXT get like COVID or something, bro? Like, I want to talk what? about NXT. You want some AIDS, bro? NXT news? Um, like just one time, bro. Just one time. Nothing. Like, nothing happened. I mean, I mean, something happened, but we, we're gonna talk about it when we do the show review, so. Stuff did happen, but but like there's nothing. There's like no news, you know. Yeah, no like injury news. Um, yeah, nothing. Have we ever heard much of anything? Let me double check. Mm. Nah, I really, I really think that nothing goes. Nothing's really going on. Uh, Julia, Russia. Julia just had surgery. I mean, that's enough. I think they still want her to work somehow. Get her to work. Uh, yeah, heat wave somehow. So. Um, I saw a tweet that they were just like WWE really wants uh advises Julia to go get like surgery. Well, the, the like, way it was worded was urged, like, hey, go get that. Yeah, shit. yeah. It was, <laughs> hey, no, don't, don't do no. We on no bullshit. We pay too much. Get that surgery. Yeah, uh, get back in the just, PC. Go protect yourself. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, get right. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I uh, yeah, she got injured also. Uh, at the um, 
at the Merry Go pay per view. I I forget what it's called. I need to watch it actually. I know uh Chris Mack linked me it. Uh, I just. I don't really watch. Yeah, I don't, I don't got the time either. Um, I didn't even get the chance to watch. Um, what is that? The Saudi Arabia pay per view. Oh, it was good. I enjoyed it. it wasn't I, bad. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find like a time to see it, but I was like procrastinating on watching. Um. that fucking pay-per-view called we're literally about to talk about it uh double or nothing so like by the time i like wanted to like kind of do anything else with my time yeah. i had nothing else so i was like man i really gotta watch this shit i'll be honest all you really gotta watch is a uh, gunther or randy i thought that was a really really good match um, i heard it was a master class i gotta lock in yeah it was really good I, I, and they left it open so they'll have they could have another match and i really hope they do soon um, because it was that good, and they had something to work off of now instead of a kind of a a match that really there was no kind of like tournament story. Out. Yeah, just tournament final, but like they had like zero. I don't think Gunther and Andy Orton have ever had any kind of interaction at all. So it was just kind of like okay, we're just getting right to it. But now if they do another match. They got something to build mm-hmm. off of. Um, especially with the whatever that botched that's, or not botched finished. Yeah, that's how you do story, folks. Um, really? Take. Take take fucking notes, Tony. Um, but okay, uh, double or nothing. Let me pull up the the yeah. wiki. Oh, excuse me. Double or nothing. Twenty fourteen. What happened? Twenty fourteen. No, I'm fucking around. Um, no. All right. <laughs> This is uh, what is it? Pre show, Diana Perrazzo versus uh, Thunder Rosa. And uh, I also got my ass whooped by Tony Storm. Oh, uh, match. Um, both had really strong records. Uh, I believe Diana had only lost to Tony Storm, and I don't think Thunder Rosa had lost at all previous, or maybe she lost, she lost to Tony Storm, right? So, yeah, um, they both had really strong records. This match was fine. I gave it a three. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing exciting either. Standard kind of match. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, the acclaim versus a uh, cage of agony. That's what they changed the name to. Cage of agony. Well, it's when you add cage. So the gates of agony. When you add cage, when you throw cage into the mix, it's cage of agony. When you throw Man, cage, I... when you throw cage into the mix, <laughs> when you throw cage into the mix, it's a whole different dynamic. Feel me? Um, nope. man, Anthony Bowens, please get away from the acclaim <laughs> and Billy Gunn. Why is Billy Gunn still beating guys? That nigga don't lose. People like to like laugh. That's all, bro. He is. Let me look at his record. He is. He's six and one on the year. <laughs> Why is he beating on Gates of Agony, Cage of Agony? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're, they're fairly up, young. So. I was still on Leona. I mean, them niggas is on ROH, bro. No. He's only 33. No, they get a lot of run on TV. I feel like you feel, but do you? They get, know? T- they get TV time. Oh, let me go check the spreadsheet. That's what I got it for. <laughs> they got, I, I've, I feel like I've seen them a lot. Yeah, they got, uh, totally Leona had nine matches this year. So, yeah, he's on there. The average is like, Six. Six what? A- average like amount of matches people the wrestlers have had in the spreadsheet is six. Ah. I mean like on ROH, on TV, rampage. Oh, on TV. I don't I don't I don't watch ROH, so it is not on the uh spreadsheet. So that's like on TV matches. It's a fuck rampage. <laughs> who do you who do you think has the most right now? Any promotion. What? Who has the most matches currently on TV? It's the same guy as last year, if that makes it any easier. Orange Cassidy? Yeah, it was Orange Cassidy. <laughs> you got 25. And then Brian is 20. I think Brian's second. The workhorsey. The uh, workhorse and hard. That matches me stinky, too. 
But yeah, as far as the six man go, I don't even remember. I just know we need to get Bowens free. He's the only thing worth salvaging in that group at this point. Oh, absolutely. Man, there's no real salvaging Billy Gunn, man. Shell boy. <laughs> Not 70 year old Billy Gunn and next caster who are. It's like his raps got worse. How do you even do that? Maybe. Just maybe. Just a thought. I, I, I know what you're going to say. I'm just saying. Okay. They were never really good to begin with. But they've gotten worse. And it's not I mean, like it's not like cheesy Cena. Like when Cena was doing it, when it was corny, it didn't really matter if they were bad. He's really I'll trying. <laughs> you know what I'll I mean? Say, like he's really uh, trying. I'll say, you know, a couple of the raps got a chuckle out of me every now and then, so. Every, every once in a while, he'll have one. But recently, he ain't had one in a while. Yeah, that's not a story. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really seen much of the, like, the acclaimed aren't really, like, on, I know they were on Dynamite tonight, but they don't really, like, be on the shows like that anymore, so. Not Dynamite. Definitely Rampage Collision Act. Which is crazy, bro. Like, they used to be something. <laughs> They used to mean something, man. The pops, they don't even get the pops like that no more. Yeah, I, I think like I know I they kind of did like, tonight though. Tonight they got a pretty decent pop, but I think that what's his face? Max Caster has like soiled a lot of the goodwill that a lot of them had. Uh because you know it's a very online fan base, so um, and he's lame. <laughs> That he lame and he's not even that good of a wrestler like to be that lame online. Like you can't even like say he backs it up in the ring. He doesn't. So not only do you suck in the ring, you also suck online. So you just suck in general. And you can't rap. So what good are you? Tell him how you tell him how you really feel, bro. <laughs> I'm saying though. Hey, I ain't disagree. Did you hear me disagree? You didn't disagree. I think that nigga is terrible. Um and I mean, the claim used to be fun, but like you, I just don't really know what you do with those guys uh, at the at this current point in time. Well, Billy Gunn had the no losing co- clause in his contract, clearly. So, what can you do? <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> That's funny. Uh. All right, let's move on. Let's uh to the actual show. Uh, we got Will Ospreay versus Roderick Strong. I'm gonna start off and say that Will Ospreay sh- really shouldn't be in this match. And then also, why is Roger Strong being booked this strong? I don't know if it's Roger Strong being booked this strong or just Will Ospreay like really likes doing the most in his matches. Probably a little coffee, coffee. <laughs> um, I, I don't even know if, if Ryder Strong is booked strong because he doesn't really get booked. Like he doesn't wrestle a lot, so I don't even know. Like they like they want him to be some kind of like special attraction. I don't really understand the dynamic of it. Um, I guess in their mind they're like he's a heel, and the TNT Championship is more like kind of like the the championship that gets defended a lot and like open challenges and shit. Mm-hmm. So they want they want to be like the anti that or whatever, but I don't know. It's I think Osprey just like his his style of match, especially in a pay per view uh, or a title match, it has to be damn near kill myself and twenty thousand kickouts, or it wasn't good. He decided to do both in this match. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Um. This match was cool. Whenever they definitely, uh, what is it? The exact point where they lost me was um when the oh, Tope Doomsday. Called. Yeah, they lost me. Yeah, it, it took me out the match. I think like it took the crowd out of the match for a little while. Um, nasty, nasty fall on his fucking forehead. I don't know exactly who. Bo- it is it a combination of like everybody fucked up <laughs> that spot somehow. I believe mm-hmm. it was Bennett who tried to do the dive, or was it Taven? I don't remember who who did it. Well, they hit their foot on the rope, which caused Will Ospreay to under rotate, I guess. And I guess maybe Taven, whoever was the base, mm-hmm. 
wasn't sure what was going on. So I think it was just a mess of like bad communication. But yeah, Osprey fell right on his forehead on the outside. It did it didn't look too good. But they kept the match going. Um <laughs> he, he kind of like he was on autopilot for a little bit, but he got he got his bearings back and they were able to finish the match. I think the match was it was it was it was fine. It was it was cool. I don't I don't think it was people I a lot of people rated it higher than I did. I I, did, I thought it was just kind of it was cool. Sure. I mean, I agree. I don't, I don't really. Uh, like, there's nothing really, really particularly bad. I just thought just, you know, it was a pretty standard kind of Will Ospreay match. Yeah, that's kind of just <laughs> kind of how the nigga get down, you know. Um, well, post match ish, um, we get the return of MJF. Oh, before you, Adam Cole comes out first. Oh, well, that part's not important. <laughs> it is important, actually. Adam Cole comes out. I, I don't remember what he said. It didn't really matter. Exactly. That's all. So, but, 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 but we had to point that out because MGF does come out in response to uh in response to Adam Cole. And low key, I kind of I kind of already been confirmed that that kind of was the end of. The storyline between Adam Cole and MJF, at least for the time being, um, MJF comes out with a nasty tan, nasty tan. I don't know. He looked like it didn't even like it. I don't know what it, I don't know about the lighting in the building. The tan, he looked like gray. Am I bugging? Probably a combination of that and that. I mean, Jackie who was on here. Well, yeah. He, so he comes out in the, in the 2002 MSJ, MSG tri- Triple H cosplay. Um, Almost the same exact outfit, except his denim looked a little cheaper than Triple H's. Triple H had that Japanese denim. I know what he had on. He had the uh, that shit looks so cheap. Bro. You know, I mean, that shit came in imported. Yeah, his he it, it looked like straight up like a uh, like a party city set of a Triple H's <laughs> return outfit. I don't know what the thought process was. Was it was he trying to be like trolling or like kind of wink wink nudge? I don't understand the reasoning for the outfit. Definitely a wink wink nudge nudge type shit. But who? But for what? <laughs> Triple H returned. He returned. Yeah, I don't know. I guess um, <laughs> it didn't feel the same. Oh, um, definitely not. Definitely wasn't 2002 MSG return. Um, if y'all have never seen that before, please go YouTube it. It's uh, probably one of the best returns I've ever seen for like a wrestler to have from an injury. Like the response to it. Um, but. Yeah, he comes out, he cuts a promo, he gets into his bag saying, nobody can make me a star, not Tony Khan, not this big man. And then he like, you know, he went in his bag. I don't think I don't think that's a compliment that nobody can make you a star. But that's just No, but he said he said I made myself a star. I'm MDF and then I don't think you're a star, buddy. But that's just me. The guy um yeah, then he kind of kind of I I feel like the promo ran a little long. I feel like he didn't need to say all this. You're going to save some of this for like Next show he's at, but whatever he kept he kept yapping. He showed off his tattoo on his ankle. It's a poker chip. It says "Bet on yourself." And he says, "I'm not fucking leaving." A la Wolf of Wall Street. He's calling himself the Wolf of AEW now. Um, Ooh. nasty tattoo. Tattoo's ugly. It you know, I, not even the like on like the, boot, the, the, the tattoo on some boot liquor type beat. Not not even like the the meaning of it or similar. I'm talking about the straight up like the line work. Like <laughs> it was ugly. It didn't even look good. Um, it looked very cheaply done, like he did that, like on a, on a night out when he was drunk or something. But yeah, I mean, personally, me personally, I'm not tattooing my employer on myself. I would not do that. Tease their own though. Um, something I wouldn't do. Definitely wouldn't either. Um, what were your thoughts on the uh, promo? While I grab some water. Okay. Um, shallow, boring. Um, I don't necessarily think that, like, I wouldn't say, I kind of don't care. Like, uh, MJF kind of like left on like a very like down note with, um, you know, the whole devil angle or whatever. Like nobody was really into that. It didn't really, it didn't really do anything for AEW and then for it to just like, Kind of just end out of nowhere, which we'll talk about as soon as you get back from the bathroom. Um, I'm here. I'm back. Oh, okay. 
Also, you went to get water, not go to use the bathroom. But yeah. um, what is it? It, it? it That program, like, left AEW in a very bad place at the start of the year, you know? Um, and then for it to end in this, like, now, zero fanfare, zero nothing, you know, no real payoff or anything like that. And I get it. You kind of have to, like, nick, nick the program because Adam Cole's probably never going to get well soon. Um, it don't seem like it. It seems like it's every yeah, time we see him. He's still... <laughs> and then he'll tell us, like, oh, you know, I'm probably not even supposed to be out here. And it's just like, you think? Um, and if, and if it's not that, it's, you know, whatever, some stupid shit he'll say. Um, but yeah, and then something that this part irks me a lot. Because I think Excalibur is really bad at what he does. Because... Also, I just think Tony Khan's also, I think everybody involves just a bad like storyteller and then commentary is just fucking oblivious and stupid as well. Um, MJF comes out and then Adam Cole tries to hug him. And then uh, and then Excalibur's like, oh my God, are they going to reunite? Did we forget how we got here? Maybe, maybe the thought process was that absence makes the heart grow fonder. I like that you said that. You, you know, if commentary said that, I don't I think commentary would, knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I, I would also say I still think that's really fucking dumb. Um, you're not going to beat me the fuck up, and then I'm gonna be like, man, I really missed you, dog. Six months later, would it like without getting my lick back? Um, I thought that part was like extremely stupid to me. And I was just like, this program, the whole devil program was kind of like rotting from the start. But to end it this way on a stupid note like that, I'm just like, y'all can't even do an ending right for it, you know? Um, but yeah, that. That's it. I just, I thought that uh, the aftermath of the match was like very stupid, and uh, Roger Strong, ex- the the rest of the undisputed kingdom became an extreme afterthought. As um, soon as Adam Cole came out, um, and then MJF came out, um, it's kind of weird how that always happens, right? Also, fresh fresh from Turkey, brand new hairline. I, I gotta mention that Adam Cole or no uh, MJF. Oh. He, when, I, when I looked at it, like he looked different. Like something don't look right. He definitely got the hairline done. That's why we ain't seen him in so long. He don't post on no social, no nothing. I like where he been at. He got he got the he went to Turkey. Took a little vacation, brought his Jordy with him. Oh. Let me go get the hair. Let me go get the hairline real quick. My new bag. My new my new my new contract. Um I don't. Even, uh, I just remember the ridiculous jacket in the stand. I don't even remember the. Uh... Go look at an old picture of his where he, you could tell he was balding. And they came back. He had, he had the Wolverine joint. He had the um, my man's name with the actor that played Wolverine. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Yeah, he had the Hugh Jackman. That's that's crazy. <laughs> the Hugh Jackman. Um. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm very curious where MJF goes from here now that this program is nicked. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I care. Well, we do know next week he is wrestling um, Roosh. Yeah, which I was just like, that's a crazy match to have on your comeback, bro. Okay. <laughs> Roosh is really be beating next week. Earn that check. Yeah, you was going for a mad law and they get that. We're gonna beat the dog shit out of you. Yeah, I respect interested it. to see how it looks in the ring. Um they can go anywhere now. He's he's pretty much not tied. This is the first time we've seen MGF where he's not involved in something. Mm-hmm. Since probably the start of the company. Like he had nothing going on, so they can do anything they really want. They can baby face him, they can heal him, they could they can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm very interested to see how that what happens with that. 
Um, it's still the same one. That that promo you cut on the pay-per-view is it's still the same old we've heard from him before. Yeah. Uh, no surprise there. But, no surprise. Um, I mean, what do you do with MJF? Uh, we're going to find out next week. <laughs> Nigga said, I ain't even going to guess, bro. I'm not going to make a guess. He could, cause he could be involved in the, in the world title picture, but we already got that set for Forbidden Door. Mm-hmm. So... Well, he might want to go for a different title. Maybe he'll go for the FTW championship. Well, I wish he didn't say that. Run it, run it back with Jericho and the learning tree. That makes me very oh, that made me very yeah, sad. We, we, we do a musical part two. You keep saying things that makes me more sad, so we're gonna move on. <laughs> um the Bane Bang game defeats uh Death Triangle. I don't care. Nope. I, I have two thoughts on this match. Um, uh, I love Death Triangle's gear. The matching gear was hard. The black and yellow looked really good. Uh, two. Bang Bang Gain needed Juice Robinson back so bad. Praise the Lord, he's back. He might save this <laughs> save this group. <clears throat> you think so? <laughs> you shit. They need something. They need they need something new in that group because the guns they don't really get to talk much. I think the guns are fine. They don't really talk much, but uh, Jay White being the mouthpiece, it ain't Ooh. working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think having Juice there brings some excitement. He's very charismatic. And kind of, you know, you don't have to put so much pressure on Jay White being the mouthpiece for the group. You can have it split between the <laughs> two. Yeah, because he can't do it. <laughs> he can't. So, yeah, I'm happy to see Juice Robinson back. And match was cool. It was, it was standard death triangle. Yeah, if you didn't like their matches before, uh, <laughs> it's the same old shit anyway. So, um, yeah. Next, we get uh, Timeless Tony Storm uh, ver- defeats Serena Deeb. Surprise, surprise. Uh, this one irked J5 a lot, and I find it to be hilarious. He was well, like, oh, yeah, no, because the match made no sense. And then, because <laughs> it, it, the match makes no sense. And that's. Just how AEW's been for a really long time. So, um, I you know it's interesting. I saw a quote Serena D put out a couple of days ago where she was like, "This is going to be the greatest women's match in AEW history." And I think she were. I think they were really, really trying to do that by going all out like that for the finish. I ain't never mm-hmm. ever first. I <laughs> heard her Tony Storm wasting a mega pile driver on Serena D. Crazy, right? It's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy for Serena D. <laughs> you save that for like a big man. You don't say that for Serena. Not my thing match is, on the card. My thing is, is that like, does Tony Storm have any big matchups left, bro? Yeah, I mean, I guess Mariah May would be the last like real matchup she has left. They don't want to, um, because they don't want to do her versus Mercedes right like, now. If That'd Mariah, be the other one. If Mariah May don't get it, bro, we kind of just have to end this. We 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 have to end this uh this little program somehow. It's coming. It has to be coming. It's very much similar to the uh, Judgment Day situation where they need to, you know let's let's get it moving. Mm-hmm. But I I also think the problem is that I don't know if they know where to position Tony Storm alignment wise. Is she a face? Is she a heel? Because clearly the crowd wants to cheer for her. Mm-hmm. I feel like they haven't fully committed the the face turn yet. Like they. Like they got cold feet about it or something like that. My thing is that like the crowd, the AEW crowd is gonna do what they want to do. So uh, yeah, I actually don't know how you like necessarily, you know, how you quote unquote baby face her. Well, I mean, you can go for the sympathetic route, which would be Mariah May takes her out, but it don't seem like we're getting there. So I mean we're gonna we're gonna have to see. But yeah, as far as the match goes, yeah, I didn't really like the finish. I thought they did a lot. A lot Fair of kick outs to finishers. It didn't need to happen. Um Tony Storm took like three of Serena Deep finishers, <laughs> like two on the apron or some shit like that. Uh-huh. It kicked out. Tony Storm doing super fucking pile drivers to another pile driver for the win. I feel like it was kind of overkill, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, 
It wasn't like it was some long. It's not like you know, like when Cody had the long epic, he'll do the three fucking crossroads. Mm-hmm. Serena it, didn't need the, the. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was how long was the match? I mean, a, what fifteen minutes? I think it's some time. But like, still. It's, it's Serena D, big dog. Like, yeah, do all that. Yeah, no, I found that to be extremely yeah, unnecessary as well. Time. I'm looking at these, I'm looking at these match times. <laughs> these matches got time. Damn. Um, that's AEW, baby. Oh, um, all right. What's next? Yeah, no. I, oh, you Orange Cassidy yeah, versus Trent. No, uh, Orange oh. Cassidy versus Trent Beretta. Uh, Boy, with I Don don't Callis. care. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> dog. <laughs> you guys hate this for collision. That's a collision. A match has never been more designed for collision, bro. And the Trent Beretta versus Orange. Trent. Trent do Beretta. This nigga, bro. I don't understand it. I, the heel turn. It's still kind of in his infancy where we don't really know like all his motivations yet. But he's just so generic that I don't I don't care. I he's not interested. He's not I don't like I don't care what his motivations are. He's not interesting. I I think I've told the story before. When I first started watching New Japan, I, I think I watched like Wrestle Kingdom like 15 or whatever. The one that had like AJ Styles Nakamura on it. Oh yeah, sixteen, I believe. Yeah, I watched that show in full because I was like, "Fuck it!" I I downloaded it, so let me raw with it. When Rapungi Vice came out, and I was like, "These dudes are the lamest niggas I've ever seen," and this theme song sucks. <laughs> I've hated Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero since I first started watching New Japan in twenty whatever the fuck. That was twenty sixteen, yeah. I hate Trent Beretta. I think I've seen Trent Beretta, like two wrestlers I've probably seen wrestle way too much is Trent and Tommy Dreamer. I hate Tommy. I do hate Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> it needs to stop. Like, I do not know why these guys. Trent serves like zero purpose on these shows. <laughs> So I don't get why he's still on these shows. That's all. That, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. Mm. Oh, and uh, wait, one more thing. Don Callis, get this nigga the fuck up out of here too. He's not going nowhere, man. He needs to go somewhere. Because <laughs> his involvement in a lot of these stuff don't really make any sense to me either. Um, he wants to sign Orange Cassidy to what is it be part of the Don Callis family and that's weird to me it's just like is what's his face never is, is Will Hobbs never coming back he's hurt he's he gonna be out for a while I think but like is he never coming back yeah like, he'll, have, he'll have Osprey he'll have I mean he'll have um what's his name he'll have Hobbs and Orange Cassidy like what happened like he don't he, like Don Callis don't even be around to catch that either Like, was you was you not with him at the pay per view? I don't think so. I don't recall. But yeah, oh, he no, was. Um, yeah, he was. Yes, he was. According to Cage, he, he was. He was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, they're having a lot of Don Callis on this show, and I don't really understand why. Um, does man make it stop? <laughs> Like he he is an, he's another individual on the show that kind of like serves zero purpose on the show, or like I, I guess it's like to have a heel manager around, but it's just like he he's I feel he's like the same as Jericho to me. Like he tries to have stories on the show, but like every story he has are like insanely bad. I agree. No, I'm I'm right there with you. So uh, let's chop it. Uh, and I don't know. I don't feel out of pocket saying that. But let's let's just stop it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next, so you, wait. You have anything to say about the match, or I don't even remember the match, bro. Thanks. Bro, I don't even know what happened. I I, I don't uh, even remember what happened. Thanks, bro. I don't want to talk about it either. <laughs> um. 
oh man, what the fuck. Uh, Chris Jericho defeats Hook and uh, Shibata for the for, for, for whatever the hell he's calling that championship uh, right now for the world. You want to talk about a dude that be smelling his own farts? <laughs> Kill this man, Chris Jericho. Um, this match was. It it was something. <laughs> I I don't. We've talked about it already. I don't understand Shibata's. Why would he care about this championship? I don't see what why. What does he care about? He had no mm-hmm. ECW ties, no Taz ties, as far as I know. Maybe he was inspired, but I don't. I don't see the reason besides being Hook's friend. But why wouldn't he let Hook handle that? Because it's his family's or at least just or at least just support him, like against like uh, what is it? Big Bill that might be waiting in the wings, but like, who was? Why do you care uh, about this? I don't know, but he was in the match. Um, they instead of thumbtacks, they did hockey pucks. So they were laying on hockey pucks. I'm sure I didn't feel good, he's but visually, can- it, you it, get it, it, it. He's it, Canadian. He is Canadian. He likes hockey. His dad is a, a, a famous hockey player. Um, mm-hmm. I get it. Um. Yeah, but I don't really much remember much besides that. I remember uh, Big Bill almost dying uh, when he almost got impaled by a table. <laughs> I should have, bro, they look into it from taking him out, dog. I ain't gonna lie to you. It might have got ugly. Did you see that? I would have spiced up the pay per view. Um, no, they would have died. I don't think a hockey puck would have killed them. No, 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 the table. When he went oh. to the table, like the, the pointy parts, like it almost impaled him. Like he just uh, missed it. I don't think that would have killed him. It might have killed him. Hit the right spot. Hey, man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't, because I don't really remember the spot or how big the fucking, uh, whatever the impaler was. What's so. Game crazy, bro. So at this point of the pay-per-view, I was like, okay, this show has been very, very average. And then everything after that, it picked up for me. And I really got into the show. Okay. Uh also I I like that a lot of people are starting to like really feel the fatigue from these shows. Um people are like outwardly like speaking about like how long these shows are going. And it's just like, yeah, they always been this way. And now you guys want to complain about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a long show. Like, it's ridiculous how these motherfuckers operate. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, okay, we get John Moxley defeating uh Tenosuke Takeshita for the I. Oh, well, nope. No, it, it's IWGP it double- Eliminator match. Yes, it was an Eliminator match. My fault. Uh, I forgot the stupid ass stipulation. I uh-huh. like this match. People were kind of off on it. I I kind of liked it. Um, it it definitely started off slow for me. A lot of Moxie just still on the arm, but I really enjoyed the finish. Uh, the final sequence I really enjoyed. If you um, could call that, if you could call it selling. Yeah, you know Moxie selling. Yeah, which oh, is that nice. pretty good. <laughs> Specials, cool with me, man. Uh, I like the question, man. I wish they had something better for him to do. Yeah, that that's honestly just how I feel about the matter. Like, uh, <laughs> sorry you had to be involved in this, or, or no, sorry they don't really have anything for you to really do. They don't have nothing. They don't have nothing for Moxley to do either. I don't feel like yeah. you feel like he's like you barely work. It feel like he's like this is a part time gig now. He's feel like he's full on New Japan. The. New Japan being like the boring gig is hilarious to me. <laughs> um, or like uh, yeah, New Japan being like where you send your wrestlers when you don't know what to do with them, and then it but be- and they become New Japan's top champion. That's great. That's nuts to me. New Japan bugging for doing that too. I wouldn't have done that, just um, in case. But also, who else would <laughs> be the champion of New Japan at this point? <laughs> Hey, they, don't, they ain't you, got and, no guys, bro. And if and if you say AEW fleeced them, you're you're in the wrong, bro. <laughs> um, 
yeah, no, I, I kind of have no thoughts on this match for like I think uh, I don't, I don't, I, I get it. Like Forbidden Door is happening very soon, but um, we're kind of having way too much uh, New Japan stuff going on. What do you mean? It's, it's Forbidden Door season. <laughs> of course, it's giving New Japan stuff going on. Yeah, I would much. hope so. I hope they would get to it earlier than they usually do. Um, it don't bother me. I I feel like Forbidden Door should probably be open to more than just New Japan. Like, uh, what is it? That Battle Royale that they had, or uh, like the Gauntlet, where they had the C- CMLL guys involved too. Well, I believe I believe Taz said CMLL is involved, or Don Callis. One of those. Somebody said CMLL will be at Forbidden Door. Let's let's have more of the motherfuckers uh, involved here. Um, Cause yeah, New Japan very nasty business. Um, Cause like you said, like who the hell can their champions be right now? Right? I don't. I, don't like, I, genu- I genuinely don't know what's going on in New Japan. I don't know who yeah, the top guys are. Nor do I. So it's just like who the hell? Like I'm scared to think who's going to be representing New Japan. Tanahashi's old ass. Who showed his old ass up on uh <laughs> on Rampage? That shit don't scare you, dog. <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't. I don't watch that product. I have no idea. It doesn't bother me. No, but I'm just like, there. That's new. Ja- I, no, nobody had New Japan can only blame themselves. They had. They knew this was gonna happen. They didn't have people lined up to be the future. <laughs> they 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 wasted ten years on fucking Sonata, just for it to not work. Who else was another young dude? They were kind of Shingo, who's my guy. Yeah, but they 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 have them going back and forth with Osprey with the uh for the main belt, which I was just like, this cool, but they done had the same match like a hundred times already. Yeah, um, and then they fucked around, and gave Evil the championship for a minute. We know how that went. If you want to talk about terrible decisions. Well, that that might have been the nail in the coffin. <laughs> I don't know about the final nail, but it was it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a piece of it. Niggas was they, telling he, they, niggas they, was, they closed the casket with that one. Niggas was telling me just five guys is a fire faction, bro. Then off the name, I don't, I don't even know who the five guys are in the group. Off the name, I already know it's a lame group. Just five guys. <laughs> just five guys, bro. <laughs> Here come just five guys. Just, <laughs> just five guys. Just say that out loud. Like, could you imagine like Jim Ross? Like, here come five guys. <laughs> Don't do attack Stone Cold. <laughs> just five guys attacking Stone Cold. <laughs> just five oh. guys. It's fucking Midian and like uh high and tie and shit. Just, just five guys. Nothing to do with each other. It's fucking stupid, bro. Uh, yeah, I'm very scared of what the uh, what Forbidden Door is about to look like on paper. Um, but next we got uh Adam Copeland versus Malachi Black in this Bob Wire Steel Cage match. Um, this is what I want to talk about. Hey, you take take the wheel, bro. All right, Steel Cage. Uh. <laughs> Barb barbed wire steel cage match. It was. I feel like this was the match he wanted to do with Finn at WrestleMania. And couldn't for multiple reasons. One, because Finn got you could open. Split open. You could open the cage door to leave. <laughs> that as well. Also, just I think he wanted to get a lot more violent and bloody, and you know, he wanted to get that brood shit over. Uh Earlier this this week, I believe he did an interview where he said he wanted to get Gangrel involved. And, and WWE was like, and WWE was like, no, I'm talking about when he was in WWE oh. when he was doing the Bruce stuff in WWE. And WWE's like, fuck no, why would we do that? <laughs> Who gives a fuck about Gangrel? Um, which I think is a valid question. Um, <laughs> then <laughs> putting up my Drewski hands, bro. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Whoever yelled like, at that who, nigga who, cooked. Who, like, like, who are we doing this for? Like, who are we, who are we doing Gangrel for? For Edge? For, we're for, not paying him just because just because Edge wants in there. This, yeah, I, I, I've harped on this ten thousand times already. I don't understand Adam Copeland's obsession with the Brood. 
because it's not a major part of his career. Like it was the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I understand it has value, but like in this 30, 30 year career that I just had, Adam Copeland has had only like maybe eight months of it was brewed. That's it. So like this obsession with brood really blows my mind, but that's not here nor there. So the pivotal moment of the match. <laughs> Malachi Black is laid out on the table. Adam Copeland decides he wants to climb on top of the cage to do a diving move off the cage through the table. Now, I don't know what happened. I I don't know. Did he have cold feet in midair? Did he get tripped and caught up on something? I don't know. All I know is that man did an elbow drop and landed directly on his feet. And I said, and the moment he landed, I said, yeah, he's cooked. I know that man <laughs> needs loaded on impact. Speedy, why are you laughing? That's fucked up. <laughs> Bro, gen- genuinely, I don't laugh. I don't like laughing at people getting hurt. But that one, I'm like, bro, come on. This, this is what I, Adam Copeland, you're probably never going to hear this. But if you do. You don't need to do this. <laughs> this is not necessary. He not hearing you, bro. One more time. Like, who, who are you proving? Like, you've done it all. You're a Hall of Fame, all-time wrestler. Who are you proving this to? You don't need to jump off, Kate. You, you want to be. I Right. So back when I went to college, I used to go to this bar called Sports Bar. It's a college bar. Lots of girls on there. The girl, the guy, name. That is crazy, right? It's just straight up just called Sports Bar. <laughs> what it was called. Girl to guy ratio was fire. It was a good time. But every time we would go there, I would, I would always see like a couple of dudes who were like That's my age fun. now, like in their 30s. And every time I saw them in there, I'm like, yo, what y'all doing at Sports Bar? They all y'all 30. Where are you? <laughs> You're just smiling friends, smiling friends me were like, Dude, you're so old. Where's your family? Where's your wife? That, <laughs> like that was my thought. Probably. When I'm in college, I'm seeing thirty something year old dudes in this college bar. I'm like, bro, why you want to be with the young niggas so bad for? Like, yo, you, you did this. This is like, move on, Edge, Adam Copeland. You, you're not the you're the old nigga in the club right now. You don't want to be the old guy in the club. But that's what you are, and you made a fool of yourself trying to do a it. fucking elbow drop off of a cage. Well, you don't yeah. need to do that. When he formed Judgment Day, that was the first nigga you're old. Why are you doing this? Yeah, I mean, if you want to get spooky shit off, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> but just uh, that's one thing. But trying to have these fucking epic moments, like this is like this is you know TLC two, when you were you know when you were in your late twenties, you're fifty years old. You don't need to do this. <laughs> hey man, now he gets to spend time with his family, bro. So ain't all that, ain't it? He got a, he it? got a broken broken tibia or fibia, one of them joints. Probably probably more than that. Um, I hope not. <laughs> I hope he I hope he sits sits at home and kind of reflects. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like really think about what he did. This match puzzles me a lot, man. And I, and you know, um, I will never forget on the ENC pod. It was, a, it was probably one of my favorite podcasts that a wrestler had that I, I, I liked it a lot. Um, it was Edge, I, I, Edge was giving a lot of good game. You know, he seemed like he wanted to be somebody that really wanted to help the young dudes. And you could kind of tell. Or, like, you can see that he tried with Judgment Day. Like, that's something that he really wanted, like, to do. Yeah. But, like, it just wasn't working with him. But, like, I feel like, you know, just that creation alone has done a lot for those guys a lot. Like, it's it's done a lot for those guys. But just not with him in it. And I know that kind of irked me, but, like, whatever. I've paved the way for you to do something better. Gave him a great theme, too. Yeah. When he goes to AEW, I'm like, oh, you know. 
he said that he wanted to put a lot of uh you know in the past he said he wanted to put a lot of uh you know young dudes over but when he asked who who he wanted to face in AEW all he all the only people he listed were like very established guys already like you know your Kenny Omega what is he said like Samoa Joe and I was just like mm, what you doing bro <laughs> like this is this is kind of not uh you you're not really standing on business with the shit that you claim um I don't well, I'm, just to wrap this thought up I does he think this is what putting niggas over look like not only that not only that think about it he hasn't put anybody over <laughs> <laughs> since since he's been back yeah. in 2020, he hasn't put anybody. He's won every feud besides Roman. Roman's the only guy he didn't beat. Everybody else he's beaten already. Yeah, like he beat the dog shit out of fan. Um, they didn't do nothing for him. Grayson Waller. Um Miz, he's he won the he, he won the feud with Miz. He who mm -hmm. else did he feud with? Um did no, nobody every AEW feud he's done, he's won, which is just really the Christian one and some collision stuff. But yeah, he's just, so he, like he doesn't really put anybody over anyway. So I don't know. And Malachi Black took the loss to a one legged man. Hate to see it. Hey, that ain't the first time that happened in AEW. This is true. <laughs> ain't that crazy how they always constantly make the same mistake? They learned nothing. Yo, bro, just like, like, did he change his mind in midair? Did he look down I'm like, yo, I'm bugging? <laughs> Absolutely. He, I'm like, he looked down like, yo, I'm wild. What, what am I doing? I'm too over this. I'm pushing 60. He not, he's not. Uh, he's only 50, but. I can't wait till he, like, tries to explain what happened there. I don't know where he plans on explaining that, but, uh. I'm, why? I'm cause why didn't he just do a splash? Why did he do a an elbow it. drop? <laughs> I would honestly. It seemed like he did the elbow drop and was just like, "No, this is a bad idea." Yeah, you, but you can't hesitate when you're up there. You got to do it, which is crazy because this is Adam Copeland. This is what this is what he's famous for. Mm -hmm. Jumping off a of high shit. It's it's play, it's played in that. Uh, <laughs> And that TLC Man. package every time, bro. Spearing every the single time. There. Spear falling off of ladders through tables to the outside. Getting uh, AA through three tables. That was a crazy <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, I don't know. It was very interesting. Yeah, man. Adam Copeland, you a weird guy, bro. Um... I'm 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 also very confused by the flying bullshit that he pulled. Um and it's it's like legitimately why did you do that? I'm trying to be he trying to be a young nigga in the club. I mean old nigga in the club, bro. No, shout no, out the sports bar. Shout, shout the sports bar, man. I used to love that bar. That shit was so much fun. I don't I don't think he's trying to be old nigga at the bar, but um he is. He wants to be. He wants to have Will Ospreay epics. You ain't Will Ospreay no more. You can't do that shit. And you're not. You're not. Uh, a Ric Flair or a Mick Foley who was able to take bumps when they got older. Like it's not you. Your neck hanging on by a string. You feel me? Like you think he would learn from that? Yeah. You know? What's next? Oh man, we're still talking about this pay per view. Uh, Mercedes Monet versus Willow Nightingale for the TBS Championship. Um, good match. Uh, it's definitely yeah, Willow's best match. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that is Willow's best match. Um, Mercedes hasn't had a lot to work with since she's left WWE, so I, mm -hmm. I say for her first match back, she looked really good out there. I wouldn't say really good, but it was, a, it really was a serviceable good. match. Hater finish though. That finish stinks. It it looked better this week. I mean it looked better on Dynamite. 
Um, but they it, it looked really awkward on Willow because she's just so much bigger than uh, Mercedes is. I don't know. It didn't look right. I don't like the finish. And I, like the crowd didn't even react to it. They didn't even realize what the hell was going on because it's such a weird convoluted move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Let's go back not... to the bank statement, bro. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Copyright trademark. Uh, <laughs> what do you even call it? What's the money related move? <laughs> <laughs> What's the money related move? Uh, the loan. <laughs> crypto lock. The loan. Crypto lock would be crazy. The crypto lock would be nuts. Um, no, nah, I'm not going to worry shop it for her. She might steal it from us. Um, she like she would shell some crypto. She'll shell some crypto. Yeah, she'll shell some crypto. I mean, she was already shelling uh, CBD, so I don't think she. That's what I'm it. saying. Yeah, I was here. <laughs> that's just one. That's just one degree away. Yeah. Um. Excuse me. Um. Yeah, no, I I don't got no real thoughts on this match. I I will say though that like. I think these matches are good, but they not best women in the best women's wrestler in the world. Good, you feel me? Um, I haven't thought that. I haven't thought that about Mercedes since like 2015. In 2015, I said she was the best, not even the best women's wrestler in the in the world. I said she was the best wrestler in the world, but she's been surpassed since then. So I'm not putting that on her no more. Yeah. Several several times. Yeah, I think being out for like that really long time. Um yeah, I heard I heard her stock not being around. So yeah, I don't know. Um I think she's still good, but we gonna we gonna I'm see. She had, she had to put her money where her mouth is at. Cause, cause I do I've seen a lot of goat talk, so we got we gonna have to see. You yeah, you did it over there. Let's see if you can do it over here now. I don't think yes. This is like when Kyrie went to the Celtics. Okay, you did it over there with the Cavs with with LeBron. Now you're on your own. Can you do now it? Now you 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 you're the girl now. This is what you wanted. All right, prove it. You're this the is girl exactly now. what you want. You're the girl now. You you wanted to be the top girl. You're the top girl now. Now you got to prove it. Yeah. Um show, show us you can carry that division. I think it's a weird. It's funny that you say it because it's a, she's in a weird spot because you know she's like, she's in a mid card. She is in the woman's mid card, yes. So it's just like I don't. Is you just take the take the title off Tony? Just take it off Tony. Tony's over though. Mercedes is not over. Answer quick. I, I think Tony's more over than Mercedes is currently. I agree. Um, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> people are people are really invested in Tony. They they, they really like this gimmick. I I don't understand it. She got some good promos here and there. When she gets in her serious bag, she she told Serena D. That was that was that was kind of brutal. That she 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 was cooking, Serena. <laughs> she said, "I will make those three seizures you had seem like a walk in the park." And I, I was said, just like, "Damn, this shit not crazy, to y'all." I said, "Damn, that was awesome!" Like, uh, that was awesome. Meet the Graham. She said, "Meet the Deebs." Look, she didn't bring up her nasty husband or boyfriend or that nigga is. Your man, Deebs. your man's a sick man. <laughs> I think like, this girl shot. <laughs> Yeah, she could take it there. Hey, Tony, if you would have took it there, she should take it there. Fuck it. Would have been my goat. personal. Would have been my goat. <laughs> I would have. I would have said she. Hey, is she wrong? Is she wrong? Is she wrong? Yeah. She said your husband got a nasty case while he around. <laughs> yeah, Marty got a weird case. Why is he around? That's for Don uh, Callis. That's that's, that's Don Callis got oh. a weird case. Why is he around? Don Don Callis is big. He got a weird case. Jericho got a weird case. A couple of niggas got a weird case. Jericho, you got a weird case. I mean, the learn the, the learning tree is a problem. 
<laughs> do 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 do. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, moving on. Sorry, <laughs> this pay per view stinks. Uh, we got Swerve uh versus Christian Cage, and I don't remember anything that happened in the match. I'll be honest with you. It, it's the same. It's the usual overbooked mess that we get from most uh, Christian shit. So. Yeah, I I genuinely don't know any. I don't remember a thing that happened in this match. I apologize for anybody who wanted a big review on this match. I don't, I don't know what happened. God, I wish I was you, bro. <laughs> uh, I, I am, I'm burdened with the knowledge of remembering what happened in this match. Um, but let me know. It's your usual overbooked Christian uh, type match with uh, Swerve doing a lot of finishers. Um, I don't think that Christian was a good. Um, first opponent for Swerve. Mm. Um, I know that we all kind of like laugh and giggle when he does his little <laughs> thing, yo daddy did type shit. Um, but I don't think it really works here. Like I don't really think he like got it over during this feud. Because for the most part... <laughs> He it don't, don't hit. Really it don't hit. Any, he don't really got any. Like it doesn't hit when he def, when you're the father or like he the father. Yeah, he's not like he, he not he's not a deadbeat as far as we know. I don't think so. What do you have much and, to work off of? And even even if he's a deadbeat, uh, most wrestlers are. So um, he's nothing to me, man. <laughs> like, your son's a sick man. I was sick. Like, what is it? M most wrestlers uh, are never with their families because they're on the road doing that sacrifice to entertain us. Um, or they just hate their families, like uh, Jake the Snake Robert. But you want to talk about a sick man? He do that right now. Well, he died, didn't he? Jake the Snake Roberts. He definitely, he definitely died. He definitely didn't he die? Did he die last year? Dude. My buggy. Is he alive? He's very much with us still. <laughs> oh. Well, I thought he died last year. You sure? Jake the Snake is definitely with us, bro. Cause I think he's still employed by AEW. He's still around. All right. Good for him. I thought I don't know why I thought he died. Who died last year? Somebody died. Oh, uh, Ollie Anderson. No, 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 I could have swore it was Jake Roberts. Okay, well, I'm happy he's still alive, Jake Roberts. <laughs> My fault. That My fault, G. You put death on his name, bro. Um, hey. All right, let's see. What are we talking about? We're talking about uh, Swerve versus Christian. Um, gotcha. But that's very funny. <laughs> yeah, but this best sucks, bro. Um, I AEW needs something. They need a new world champion already. Um, if there's anybody that should have been transitional, is this nigga Swerve? Well, I mean, shit, he might be the way uh the main event on Dynamite went tonight. I hope so. Um. Yeah. All right. Then uh, Anarchy in the Arena. Um. Do you like this one? I liked it. I did like it. Now, do I have some uh, criticisms? Yes, I do. But as a whole, look, you know what it is? I like. I know what I'm getting myself into when I watch this. I knew it was going to be wacky, stupid shit. So that, that's fine. Um, my issue was kind of more of like, from a logical sense, uh, I feel like if in a match... You get set on fire. You should be out the match. After that, I, I know agree. we're I know we're suspending disbelief in a match like this to a different level um, than any other kind of match, mm -hmm. but some rules still gotta apply. If I if if I get set out on fire in a wrestling match, you should never see you shouldn't see me for weeks. Personally, I, to be realistic, I shouldn't be yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> for for some time, got a weird case. Not, 
<laughs> not being involved in the finish. That would probably be my biggest gripe on the match. Um, besides that, I, I thought it was for, also I think the fire spot should have been the finish. If you're going to set somebody on fire, it should probably be the finish. I agree. <laughs> that's my other thing. Um, Which but they had cool. to get. That's so crazy that that's not the finish. Like you set someone on fire. I remember last year I complained that the fucking exploding steel chair wasn't the finish when it should have been. They think it's a whole other level. <laughs> they said we're setting this thing on fire. <laughs> And um, yeah, shout out to Tony Khan rolling around on the floor. That was really funny. Did you see that clip? Yeah, I seen that clip. They rolling down the ramp. You like Joker? Remember that video of Joker? The <laughs> fuck? That's what he looked like. Yeah, Tony Khan's a funny dude, man. Also, um, okay. and a cave from a cave fame standpoint, why would he give that man a fucking flamethrower? Get his revenge, bro. You gonna kill your employees? Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but you put your employee life on the line. Sometimes you gotta let these niggas know you mean business, man. You can't. Sometimes you, sometimes you, you gotta pop out and show niggas. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes. You feel know I me? Mean? Um, you not about to beat the dog. You not about to beat the brakes off me and then uh, not pay. <laughs> the flamethrower. Also, it's just like we know that Darby Allen can't like really like go right now so it's just like i mean he went so are we sure he definitely went but it's just like we know he hurt so it's just like you know he he had to do like some sort of like spectacle type uh jazz going on um yeah him getting hung up and they have the fight around his lifeless hanging body <laughs> was really funny uh to me crazy bro also, I think I still think it's crazy. Like he broke his leg. Let's hang up from his leg. <laughs> I think it's a psychopath. What's wrong with him? Or like, or you know, what? Uh, I don't think he like broke his leg, but like he got hit by a car. At least he was smart to duck it this time. This time they they, they didn't specify it on the show <laughs> during during the Anarchy Arena where he almost got hit by a bus, but they did. Mm-hmm. They kind of uh, retroactively explained it tonight when they said that. He escaped it. Because before Man. that, it left, it left it to our, our imagination. So I just assumed he got hit and got back up. Uh, that would be a very Darby thing to do. Get hit by <laughs> you know what I mean? Right back up. Hey, you can't even say it's unrealistic because he really did that. You can't. You can't even argue that one because he really, he really yeah. did that. He really, he really, he, lived, he really lived his raps. He really did get hit by that bus. So. <laughs> I think it's just crazy trying to recreate it, but that's just me. That's just me. Where are you getting a bus from? Oh, I mean, Tony Khan got money. I'm sure it's just a rental joint. But I mean, it was, but it was, it was, uh, what's my man's name? It was, it was Jack Perry's. Cool. Yeah, it was Jack Perry's bus. <laughs> His little logo on it and shit. I think that bus was money? like I'm I'm pretty sure that bus was like in the works soon as like Darby returned. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. I thought it was funny. Uh Jack Perry got money? He should. He should got uh his pops money. How much was Luke Perry really worth though? Hey man, I'm not gonna speak on the dead man's worth. <laughs> let me see, let me see what his daily net worth was. I said a lot of crazy shit on this show, but that's not something I'm about to comment on. According to Luke Perry worth ten million. I mean, according to celebritynetworth.com, <laughs> very, very uh, accurate. I mean, I guess you got bus money. 10 million? You got bus money. Um, yeah, but I actually really had a, I had a fun time. I went into the match hoping it would be fun, and I had a good time. So I, I, I brought one pretty high on it, honestly. I thought it was the highlight of the show for me. That's crazy, but um, I will say that what match was better than this? Oh, I think all the matches are terrible, so I couldn't really tell. But, it, but um, out of the matches we had available, what was the best match? It was this one. 
Drewski hands, bro. Um, I will say, though, um, I think this one was better than last year's uh, NRT yeah, in the arena. 100%. And then um, Brian Danielson, just if I think like, when is it like just a week ago now? A doc, he said that a doctor was just like, hey, man, maybe you should stop doing this shit. And then they let, you know, they did all sorts of shit and let Jack Perry get the pin on him, which I felt like was very, I felt like that part was very unnecessary. I don't think uh, Jack Perry really needed to get that, uh, needed to get the he pin on him. shouldn't have been there because he got set on fire. That too. Um, <laughs> like, I don't don't really understand why they had Brian get pinned here. Like, Brian, and also, like, I know it's Brian Danielson. Like, his name has, like, a lot of worth, you know? Or it's just, like, you know, the mystique of Brian is, like, still there and stuff. But it's just, like, the snake is beat a lot. Like, a lot. He does pile on a lot of wins, though. He's, like, I think he had, like, 20 wins. Let me check. He has he said he's seventeen and three on the year. Seventeen and three. Yeah. And most of that is like just collision matches with people. Usually with Claudio as a teammate. <laughs> um yeah, no, he I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I don't think that a Brian Danielson win is really worth much in AEW right now. In my opinion, mm. um, I do. I do wonder if they'll they'll run Jack Perry versus Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson only has a couple more months left. He, allegedly, his contract is up after uh, All In. So, shit, he said he don't with this shit uh, after a certain point. Yeah, he said this is gonna be his last year full time. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> <laughs> shit, and they. <laughs> I'll, he he ain't about to get that state. Uh, like, well, I think he should uh, get like the. No, he will. He will. Uh, he can get the thing. Yeah. yeah it, it, I mean, they're doing a, a show in Tacoma. I don't know how far away that is from like Aberdeen, where you're from. But I mean, it's, it's a home state. I can see that being his last show mm-hmm. in Tacoma, in the Tacoma Dome. Uh, I don't know, man. It's this and they can do a good number off that. I think Tacoma Dome is pretty big. Dan- Daniel said ending on AEW, bro. What a that's a wet fart to end the shit, bro. He, he could end up on a uh, legend deal. He'll still go to the Hall of Fame. He'll get his he'll get his shit. No. That'll happen. Like, I'm not. Uh, I don't feel uh, his yeah, last right. match might be in AEW though, yeah. But he, he even said though he's gonna be it's not he's not like a fully retired. He's just not gonna be like full time. Oh, he's he's gonna be full of oh, yeah, okay. he's not like full on. Like he's never gonna do a wrestling match again. He <laughs> just it'd probably be like on some Undertaker shit. His doctor like wrestle twice a year. His doctor told you, oh, he's still gonna wrestle a little bit. He he got hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if they want to if they want to do a, a the damn Brian Danielson retirement show. I mean, Tacoma Dome holds twenty thousand, probably like what seventeen, sixteen, with like the stage and everything. Mm-hmm. Similar to what Sting did, sixteen. So yeah, I mean that that'd be a good look. The beautiful stadium too. Wow, I like that. Uh, what stadium? T- Tacoma Dome. Oh, it's like right in front of a mountain. It's just art. Fire. Love a good mountain. Do love a good mountain. Um. All right. Well, that's double or nothing. Uh, I think this pay per view is not great. Um. Very middle of the road for me. I thought the second half of the show was really was good. Um, first half of the show was very pedestrian though. Nothing really stood out. Yeah, they need to do something about these shows. Like, just, just fine tune it a little bit, <laughs> or uh, really gauge what they're putting on the show. Like, I'm I'm starting to see that like more people more people than usual are very upset. Like, how long this pay per view went. Um, which I'm just like pay per view. These 
maybe this has always gone this long. So I don't know why you guys are upset <laughs> about it now. Um, but yeah, uh, in the future, I hope. Uh, let's just start condensing these pay-per-views just like a little bit. Just entertain the thought, guys. Just one time. Just a, a short pay-per-view. Because this pay-per-view overall has 12 matches. Yeah, that ain't, you know. that ain't too much. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm wild. I, I will say Double or Nothing is, is one of their bigger shows. It would be like, a quote unquote, their big four. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can see them. Well, but you don't need that for like Dynasty and shit. That's a show that don't need 12 matches. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, is, is Dynasty going to be an annual joint Maybe. for them? I mean, it seems like they're going to add more. I mean, I think 10 to 12 is what it looks like now. This is I think after Forbidden Door, the longest break for a while. Oh, shit. How long the break going to be? I don't know. Well, Forbidden Door is what? That's a couple weeks. Let me see. I don't even know what the hell it is. Forbidden Door. Uh, It's Four. June. It's June 30th. Okay. So, the end of the month. So, they got a month to build to that. And then all in is at the end of August. And all out two weeks later, and then it's Wrestle Dream, which is in October. So yeah, so after, okay, so after all out will be the I guess the longest stretch. No people, Wait. yeah. Hmm. That should be interesting. My book. I mean, if you look at it, they have, they have a pay per view every month. So going forward, oh, going forward every month. Uh... Yeah, every month. So yeah, probably got ten to twelve every year. Good ish. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> a lot of AEW content makes me nervous. And I'm getting kind of scared that they might end up having three hour dynamites. I'm... Hey, y'all niggas think I'm joking? They get that. They get that extra hour. I'm out. <laughs> I am so serious. These shows are already killing me at two hours. Show show killing me on the first hour. I can't. I I can't. Three out, three out of the dynamite's kind of rough. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know what I, I know it's gonna be rough because them fucking three hour fucking blocks of uh, collision and rampage. They'll be kicking my ass, man. I, I I'll watch it on a Sunday, bro. <laughs> it's a long one. It's a, it's a, it's a stretch, man. It's a, it's tough to get through. I know it's just a joke in the chat, bro, but like that shit really scares me, bro. I'm really scared at the thought. Let's pray. Um, I'm gonna get a dynamite real quick. I missed the whole first half. Of it. I didn't. I I, mean, I I had some uh obligations I couldn't get out of, so I missed like the first like 45 minutes of the show. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. The show is gonna be the quick hits because uh anything that weaves into the pay per view. Um, do the thing. Uh, so Mercedes has her celebration thing. She has a celebration, and then uh, it turns out that Sky Blue was the one that attacked her. Oh, is that that? So they get it was Sky Blue the whole time. Yep. Okay. And then they settled. They settled that feud in forty five minutes. <laughs> All right. Sky Blue. I did watch that match. So yeah. Yeah, because they have to. Um, I I didn't have a pro. I I wish they would have done that. We would have seen a little bit more Sky Blue on TV in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I feel like she's been kind of like to the side for a while, especially since Mariah Mar Mariah May's been around. She is the new Sky Blue. Um, so yeah, <laughs> she on all the shows. So I um I don't. Yeah, I kind of wish she was, you know. Wasn't so out of sight. Yeah, and I guess it was like teased a lot more because what is it? Uh, was it Willow or like who who put her in that barbed wire? Or was it Julia Hart that was in the barbed wire? I don't. I don't even remember. I don't recall. You don't remember when Willow had the uh, like a barbed wire, like a hardcore match, and somebody got stuck in the barbed wire. 
That was Julia. That was Julia? Oh, okay. That um, was Julia. Yikes. That shit must have hurt. I think. Uh, was that Julia? I don't remember. I really don't remember. It might have been Sky Blue, actually. I don't know. But either way, Sky Blue had really been around. She's had like, yes, like one match like, on like collision. Capitalize. <laughs> yeah. So like that's all. I, I'm not I mean, if they want to have Sky Blue be the attacker, that's whatever. But I just kind of wish she was around a little bit longer. That's all. Or just uh just a little bit more, uh, to like, you know, kind of hint at, you know, her being the attacker. Yeah, that's out of nowhere. <laughs> oh so, yeah, she yeah, it was her. Like, what? Okay. okay. Yeah. It, it, it's very much it's very much Rikishi hitting Stone Cold with the car. Like, what? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Why'd you, know you do it? Eh. You weren't even on the show. You weren't even on 90, uh, 99 Survivor Series. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, one of those, like, okay, I guess. Hey, he did it for the wrong. Um, all right. Yeah. So that happens. And then, oddly, what's weird is that, like, you know, AEW likes to do things different than WWE just because, but like, they. They had the Mercedes thing happen. Like her whole like celebration thing. Sky Blue comes out. She attacks Mercedes and all that. And then a mess gets made. After the little celebration with the balloons and all that. They cut into a video package that recaps the pay-per-view. Why wasn't that done at the top of the show? I think they like to have a wrestler come out to start the show off no matter what. To the point where it'll, it'll a, a, rec- a recognize a, a recognizable face to open up the show. Like That's why it's always it's, all, it's always or Cassie is always John Moxley or it's uh now nah, Mercedes is the name they could throw out there to open shows up. That shit don't make much sense to me. Or Adam well, Copeland. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well that nigga gone. Um yeah. but all right, that happens. All right, and then uh we get Swerve versus Kill Switch. Um as you will know, it is a match that goes way too long. Um, Swerve hits him with like mad finishers, and then uh, he what is it, Luchasaurus? He doesn't pull a Bobby Fish, but him kicking out like uh, kicking out a Swerve's finisher, very unnecessary. Um, why are you doing that? <laughs> uh, and then when he, he he kicks out and then Swerve is just like what the fuck and then hits him with uh hits him with a house call and then that's what, like what puts him down like he does a swerve stomp from the top rope and then um well I think it's always from the top rope but uh he does a swerve stomp and then Luchasaurus kicks out like you know two nine 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 uh he get the mania kick out mm. and then Swerve is just like what the fuck and then uh kicks him in the head and then uh and then he st- does the house call and then he stays down. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the match, what is it? Swerve cuts a piece of his hair off because that's what they did to him. They cut off a little t- teeny tiny dread. Eye for an eye. Mm-hmm. Now, nah, you know, if you cut one of my dreads off, I'll be hot too. I, I, don't want, I don't want revenge. I get it. You would be hot, right? You'd be upset. I, I, I'd want a piece of your hair as well. Would you wait many weeks? <laughs> I mean, he had to so. catch him. He had to catch or, him at the right time. Or, or, or would you do it as soon as possible? You get your lick back as soon as possible. Maybe this was as soon as possible, right here. This is as soon as possible. I mean, Kill Switch ain't really been around. He hasn't been around, bro. Not really. He's been around. He's been around this whole Christian shit. He got him, and he got to him, right? He got to him now. But shit. What? What are we? What are we doing? There was this, sometimes you have you got to find the right time. To be able to do shit. Remember when they, remember when Drake was rushing um Kendrick? See what happened? Shouldn't have did that. I guess, bro. Um next, what else happens on this shit? Um TV time with Chris Jericho. Terrible segment. I heard it was terrible. I don't I don't I don't I have no idea what happened, but I I I saw the timeline. Nothing positive. <laughs> Um, what is it? I what's it? What's his uh big bill? Um, he still can't cut a promo. Um, and then production flubs, so they cut him off mid promo. Um, nice. and then Jericho is just like, I, 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 run that back. 
Uh, and don't, don't draw attention to it, guys. But uh, as that happens, we forgot to mention it, but Brian Keith um, also gets involved for the Oh, yeah, he, he made of it. Yeah, I forgot about that. He wasn't in the finish. We forgot to bring that up. I mean, the nigga's not important. Uh, he is now a Jericho meat muncher, so um, nice. very, very unfortunate. Jericho doesn't need a stable of guys like all the fucking time. Like, why must we be? <laughs> why must we go through another Jericho stable? And this is probably the worst reinvention and probably going to be the worst version of the stable. Um, I implore you to watch the segment back. Um, Brian Keith. I, will. I, I, I got spreadsheet stuff I got to do. So I'll watch yeah. the rest of it. But Brian Keith uh, just starts yelling his shit. <laughs> that's that's going to be his thing. He's going to start yelling at people for not appreciating Chris Jericho. Like, this is just a remix of the Jericho Appreciation Society, bro. Which, which is a remix of the other table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Jericho just out of ideas. He had nothing. So he wanted to leech off of young wrestlers. The big build not that young, but um <laughs> Brian Keith, I believe he's still if he's not in his early thirties, he's twenties, so I hope Brian Keith. He's thirty two. So yeah, you know what I mean? So he's still young in the game. I'm sad that he's a part of this. Unfortunate. Oh, uh, so that's oh, what is it? Uh, Hook comes out, and you know, they they had to bring up the security guards because that's the only people around that he could really beat up. And what is it? Obviously, they have. What is it? It's like uh, it's Big Bill, Chris Jericho, and uh, Keith, and. Clearly, he's outnumbered. Then Samoa Joe, literally out of frame, comes in and stops Hook, and then they walk away. So, uh, since Shibata is gone, now that they're they're gonna have um, excuse me, uh, <laughs> it seems like uh, since Shibata is gone, they're gonna have Samoa Joe be in Hook's corner. Which I'm just like, why, Samoa Joe? You're another nigga. Like, why do you care? Like. Why do you care about this belt that's not recognized by AEW? Like, that's not gonna go in the record books, bro. Man, you don't we, like Jericho. We could Wikipedia page at most. Um Soraya just posted a, a peace sign with a very blurry image. So I guess Well, <laughs> online just now. Yeah, online just now. I don't know what that implies, but if it means you're gone. Wow, she, I think she booked for a match. She booked for a match this weekend. She was, she was booked for a match tonight, and it didn't. Oh, happen. she booked for. Oh, oh I wonder. Hmm. Hmm. I ain't wondering shit. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. Let me continue. Where did I leave off? Of? Oh, uh. Rocky Romero and John Moxley have a fucking match. So I, that's when I came in. I caught the end of that. Um, yeah, it was a match. Fucking hate it here. Um, <laughs> I was still eating, so I couldn't uh, couldn't hit the, the hit the turn to turn this shit off. Um, I don't really know what to say about this match. Uh, it was a match, and he stopped selling his arm as soon as it finished. Like I, I still don't like Rocky Romero. So I just wanted that. Uh, just wanted to put that out there. I really don't like this guy. Uh, uh I thought that the casino gauntlet was. To determine a challenger for John Moxley, but I was sorely mistaken. No, it's for, um, it was for a uh, swerve. Yeah. So, um, that match. So I, uh, I, I, I like it. I thought it was a fun move. I like I like the gauntlet. 
gimmick. I'm fucking with it. Uh, I think it's whatever, but Jeez. it's very very yeah. Royal Rumble, very Royal Rumble esque. You don't know who's coming out next, and just you get some little surprises. Uh, the people involved in this casino gauntlet were Jay White, Pac, Mystico, Will Ospreay, Shoto Aminu, who I believe this might be the first time he's ever been on AEW, if I'm not mistaken. Surprisingly, Leo Rush, who mm-hmm. left on it didn't seem very positive term, but I guess maybe they rekindled any kind of you know ill will towards each other. Orange Cassidy, who got beat up earlier in the show, and Etchero, my guy. Um, Ooh. who's um, your guy? Etch Etch. Well, oh, if you can't say it, that's my bad, bro. Did I, I say am... it wrong? Shit, you didn't sound like you was you don't sound confident that you said it right. <laughs> Cause you kept saying who is it? It's Etchero, ain't it? I can speak I can read Spanish, oh. nigga. Don't try to play me. I was just asking who the fuck you were talking about because I didn't hear you. Etchisero, my guy. Anyway, uh Will Ospreay picks up the win. So interesting choice given the TNT championship. We're particularly gonna have him wrestle for the world championship a month later. Shout out to the scoop man, scoop man. I kind of had a feeling if Will Ospreay was involved in this, he was going to win it. They, they're really pushing him hard. Do they make him double champ? Is he double champ? I, I, do they do they want to go into all in with him being champion? Like AEW champion and... And TNT championship. Both of them. You mean uh, he's like intercontinental? I mean international. I apologize. Yeah, international champion. I'm sorry. Oh uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think they should. So you rather have Swerve to go over at the pay per view? I don't feel like they should be booking this match, but uh, I, I figured this match would be their all in match. Who? Who is? Who is Osprey facing? At what? At Wembley, if he like like. Osprey walks in double champ. Who's he facing? I don't know. They could do break around Brian back. Um, Moxley. Who knows? They could. They have options. They could probably just throw out there. They could do really anybody. You could do face face, or you could do face heel. Mm-hmm. See, so you, oh, you could you could you could run you can run him with Brian again. You want to run that back? That way, you get Brian a main event. At the pay per view as well, on his way out, you mm-hmm. could do. You run him Briswer back again. Moxley is always an option. Um, if you want to do IG, IWG, IWGP champion versus Will Ospreay versus the R- I'm not Ring of Honor, excuse me, the World Champion. Um, that'd be pretty much it. You could run Okada. You'd have to definitely build up Okada a little bit more. Um, if you want to do that. Eddie Kingston's out. Nice. Those, those, those would be the options. I feel like so. Yeah, th- those would be the options. Yeah, I don't think. Or Hangman, if we, if we get Hangman back in time, he, we can get that going. But I think it's definitely going to be Hangman. Swerve, or MJF, right? MJF, MJF is there as well. Yeah, they would, they would probably go um, Swerve Hangman, if anything. That is true. <laughs> but I don't think. Do you want to run the bet back again? We just. I feel like. I'm sure. What else do they got? I don't. I mean, I gave you some options. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I'm very interested to see how this finish goes because it might be a bullshit finish, and they run it back at Wembley as well. I don't know AEW to do bullshit finishes, bro. Well, sometimes they do. Do do well. They'll do a bullshit finish, but I don't think they would like you know run it back or do good. Or, you know, do a bullshit finish for storyline reasons to be like, no, nah, we're going to continue this feud going forward. They don't do that often. It's, it's going to be an interesting summer. I'll put, I'll put it that much. For Swerve and for Osprey, see what kind of their directions are going. Mm-hmm. Risky business, uh, risky territory they're running into uh, doing this. But who am I to judge? Uh okay. Trent Trent joins the Don Callis family. Um 
uh, Don Callis opens, like he has a contract and he wants to give it to Orange Cassidy. But Orange Cassidy is just like no, and I'm just like, who who thought that Orange Cassidy would do it? I mean, he has been courting Orange Cassidy for a while now. Has people felt like he's been working? Don Callis felt like it was. Like I, I know Don Callis is stupid, but we ain't. Um. Yeah, so I don't really know. I felt like the whole thing was uh, a little weird, but it is what it is. You sound so fed up with the show. <laughs> I'm. I'm just like who like. People are just like, uh, what is it? That tweet has been circulating around again, where like it was just like, oh, we want to like a wrestling program that doesn't insult like people's intelligence. And it's just like, you must think I'm stupid if you think Orange Cassidy is going to be like joining this group. Like, there's yeah, just, they, like, they, truly they no possibility put, in the world that it was going to happen. They didn't do a very good job of making it seem like there's a possibility this could happen. Like, Orange Cassidy hasn't been given his due to time of day at all throughout these weeks. Like, why would you think he's going to join your faction? Like, there was, there was just, like, no way in hell that the, this was going to happen. So I don't even know why they tried to entertain the idea of it happening. Just to get to where we got now, I guess. And where Trent, we got, joining, <laughs> Trent joining the Don Callis family. We have to cast that we don't have to do this. <laughs> we really fucking don't. Um, excuse me. All right. Continuing on, I think I'm missing something, even though like I watched the whole show and I made sure I made uh I put everything there. Um we talked about the gauntlet. That was yeah, that was uh, the best promo on the show was uh, Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander uh, solidifying her new heel status. Uh, Willow's not on the show. Um, Mercedes versus uh, Sky Blue was very whatever. Um, yeah, I feel like that's it. Um, I don't. I don't really remember anything else that really happened on the show. Well, like, I don't. Like, I remember what happened, but that's it. <laughs> I'm really trying to think uh, of anything else that happened in the show. I don't think I missed anything. So, now they got everything. At least that's everything I saw. At least, no, okay. All right, moving on. Oh, NXT time. It's time to get NXT. sexy, man. This episode of NXT. All right, hold on. I just want to be sure. In ring wise, this episode terrible. was terrible. I, I, I definitely <laughs> was about to say that this episode, in ring wise, this episode was fucking terrible. But it almost felt like a party. You know yeah, I mean? this like, episode felt like it just felt like a party. I I watched this episode like like on the high of like say the run. I'm talking about it, whatever. I thought it was very funny, yada yada, all that. Right as I'm like doing the docket and i'm like all right this match happened this match happened this match happened i was just like dog this shit sucks it was in ring wise it was fucking terrible no it was really bad and we were, <laughs> we were gonna have to have a conversation about the nxt roster too particularly the men not so much the women but the men it's bad this this might be one of the worst like male rosters nxt's established in a long time I'm not even gonna disagree with you, bro, because we sad, Rich bro. Holland is here, bro. Bro, Rich Holland, Gallus, um, who else? All these bullshit. <laughs> who the other dudes? Uh, Lexus King, Malik Blade, Adri- Idris Enofe, and the Good Brothers. Just, ew! All these guys stink. I'm so, like, I, I don't want any of these guys to wrestle. Dante Chin, I don't know enough about him to really care. You um, see, you're not locked in, that's why. I, besides Javon Evans and Trick Williams, I don't care about none of these dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I, I think NXT it is, is in a very strange... Uh, it is in a very strange way. 
not good. It's not a good, not looking good right now. Um, yeah. the average match rating I gave the show was two point three six. That good? That's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I think angering wise, this show was like not great. But whenever Sexy Red wasn't on the screen, I was asking, where is Sexy Red? Shout out, shout out to the PC for really making Sexy Red coming out feel like a big deal. Yo, they were, they were, the crowd was hot and, and they knew the song, which is also nice. Of course. Um, I thought what they did with Sexy Red on the show as a whole. Was good. They didn't have her do too much, but she was able to get somewhat physical, um, not physical, but like involved in the show. Mm-hmm. And it felt like and it felt like she was happy to be there. And you know, she's a fan, and she appreciated that she got to do this. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So when she came out and said, "Oh, I'm going to be hosting Battleground," I was a little concerned. But as the show went on, I was like, "Okay, nah, we're cool. This is this is going to work." Why are you concerned about Battleground? Because I was just like. <laughs> I didn't know how much she really like took this serious. No. Because that was the way the show started off. That was like the first thing she said. I was like, okay. But like. Be real. And uh, Vic Joseph is hilarious. <laughs> no, Vic Joseph and Booker T. This, this might be one of their best nights ever. What did Booker, Booker T. said something that made me, what did he say? Oh, what did Adrisa Nofe? <laughs> wait, wait. When he was like, and Vic was like, maybe to look up the Harlem Heat, like what Harlem Heat two thousand? <laughs> that was really funny. That shit made me laugh when he said that. Wait, he said that. He said Harlem Heat. Do we said what Harlem Heat? Harlem Heat two thousand. <laughs> oh, like, nah, he, he green as that, hell. That shit was funny. That was really funny. Um, yeah, he really don't like them niggas, and I'm starting <laughs> to see why, bro. They stink. I kept telling you my, they stink. My thing is, is that they used to be good. No, they didn't. They were never good. That's bullshit. They used to be fire, bro. No, they weren't. They stink. Hey. Sean, Sean knows it. I know it. I kept saying it. Listen to the war doing. report. Go go find the tapes where this nigga you want to go back. Like, hey, you want to go, you, you go back four years ago and find one of them fucking tickets. They were sitting in the PC for four years because they stink. They not that bad, bro. Anyway. Yeah, um, sexy red, but yeah, all the shit Booker T telling sexy red to shake it faster was also insane. <laughs> Man, it's too horny, too horny. Um, he, now, now, now the horny XT allegations are back because because it's because of Booker T. That's because niggas is lame. Um, Sean too, Sean a little nasty ass. He was like, "What do you say?" He said, "Come give daddy some sugar." <laughs> Did you see that video, that clip? Yeah, I seen that video and I see niggas clutching their damn pearls about it. I'm just yeah, like, Whatever, nasty niggas. Bro. Uh, what's wrong with you, Sean? I I defended you on your horny your horny old man allegation. You hit it. With, <laughs> you said the horniest possible thing an old man could say. Don't give daddy some sugar. Same that. You can't get horny. You can't get than that. But no, nah, um, in all seriousness, though, so, um, no, nah, I thought I thought sexy red was fantastic on the show. That was really fun. Yeah, it was great. Um, can't wait to see how uh, and like what is it the capacity of how she like hosts Battleground um, like how involved is she's going to be in hosting Battleground like is she going to be because uh, I remember when Shati was like hosting Halloween Havoc um, you know that was fun but um, she probably just open it and maybe like be in a segment backstage after like, uh, that's all I can see uh, hope she gets a little more involved in that. <laughs> She's. Uh, what do you want to do? What the fuck do you want to do? Jump off the cage? You know, she gonna lock in on uh, NXT Underground? Uh, that'd be lit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not hating at the thought. That'd be fire, bro. If she wearing that same outfit, something might fall out. Be careful. And you talk about you talking about Shawn Michaels and Booker T being wild. This nigga nasty. Who? I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. Kill this nigga now. Nah. Oh, I'm about to cough. Hold on. While you're coughing, okay. um, like, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm Dante Chan. Uh, hold on, hold on. I wanna, we, we didn't oh. even talk about the opening segment. What happened? 
Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess. So a- okay. Ava introduce Ava introduces Sexy Red, and then um Sexy Red comes out. She's shaking ass, crowd going crazy. Ava's kind of nodding. She don't know. I know Ava don't know none of these damn songs. Um, it was probably her idea to bring her. Ava don't listen to damn Sexy Red. She listens to, like Bring Me to Horizon or some shit. Ava oh, killed this other. nigga. I don't even know if she listens. It's, she's she's a rocker. She'd be at the Warp Tour if it still existed. Um, but uh, maybe not the Warp Tour. One of them heavy metal joints. But um, wherever Rhea be at. But anyway, uh, uh, what is it? Download or whatever for NXT? Yeah, what a uh, <laughs> download post. festival. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so Triple H coded. Download. Yeah. Let's, let's put it in a fucking metal metal. Uh... They say, hey, man, they pay. They pay. <laughs> he, he, he just wanted to go. That shit. <laughs> hey, the admission. All right. <laughs> But um yeah, so she she unveils a new um women's North American championship. I like it. I like it better than the men's one. I don't like that little maroon fucking uh, six trap they had. Um, I, I don't. I kind of wish it had its like own like design. Like I'm cool with the white uh the white strap that's on it, but I'm just like uh maybe can they get something like that's kind of more unique to them. But I guess that's where that, we, nah, that's where they maybe like to, the, like to do the thing where they had both championships the same now. Because uh, SmackDown's the same way the women's championship like, looks like the men's championship, yeah. just different strap. This is the thing they do now. Oh, I, I was just hoping for some, you know, new era type beat. You feel me? Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I'm cool with um. Like the the belts, whatever to me. Um, Sexy's waving the belt in the ring. That was funny. <laughs> Tatum, Tatum Paxley sneaks up from behind, tries to snatch out Tatum, <laughs> try to snatch out Sexy Red's hands. That Sexy Red so said, "Nah, uh." What the what the what the? <laughs> I mean, uh, Tatum, this that is the second time on the show that uh oh well that's the first out of like two times on the show where sexy red is like doing a pull apart with with the damn belt nah not my belt um yeah. so that leads to Meechin coming out we get Meechin versus Hayden Paxley I thought this yeah. I thought this was probably the when I'm looking back this is probably the only good women's match on the uh on the card I gave it a two and a half. That's probably the second best match of the night. If that says anything, <laughs> yeah. Um, yikes! <laughs> eh, I didn't think it was good. I, I don't really care for Meechan wrestling. No, oh, no. Tatum Paxley, to be honest. Um, so, oh yeah, you you don't see division where, but that's okay. I don't. Normally no, I don't. <laughs> so it's okay to be blind. But um, yeah, Meechan picks up the win. Very black uh women's ladder match we're gonna have at uh five out of the six girls are, are at least at somewhat somewhat black. <laughs> Such a crazy thing. Somewhat black. I mean they're not full uh, cause they got some black in them because so Ruka. I mean, yeah, but it's like it's like a quarter. You know what I mean? So Ruka. I mean like if I saw her on the street, I that wouldn't be my first thought. You feel me? But like if you I see, saw that's Jada why Park, you, that that that's why you don't judge a book by their cover. You feel me? You don't. You don't. But but we know. I'm just saying. <laughs> but we Jada, know. <laughs> but with Jada Parker, if I see Jada Parker on the street, I know what that is. You know what I mean? She looked great on on last night too. Let me tell you. But um, when I see uh, Shawn Michaels and Booker T, bro. I just said she looked great. I didn't say shake it faster, or come or come give daddy some sugar. Come you give daddy say, some sugar and nuts, bro. You didn't, <laughs> <laughs> Who says that, nasty nigga? Yeah, that that that's all. That's old head game. You wouldn't know. Yeah, that's nasty. About that. That is, that's nasty. Come give daddy some sugar, Sean. You are sixty years old. Hey, he a young man. No, we not. Um, I mean, a bald old. Not nasty, he, nasty he just man. he just got he just got the buzzy. Nah, he's bald. Think <laughs> of ball. He, he's hiding under the hat. <laughs> bald, nasty, bald man. Ball oh. digger. Shut up. <laughs> ball digger. That that's what makes it for you. Know, you know what makes it worse? 
You can't be a nasty nigga and be bald. You can't be both. That's too much. Um, I feel like you can't. Nah, that's nasty. You can't be bald and nasty. You can't be old perv and... <laughs> and bald. Know, and bald. I don't I, care feel like... I, don't, I don't care who you were when you, who you were in the 90s. I feel like most nasty niggas nowadays are bald. Mm. I'm just saying. Niggas get a beard. They get a little too they they get a little too wild, bro. You're right, Joe Button. That's true. He's bald. He Told nasty you. nigga. Damn. Damn. Put it man. that way. You just use it some You just gotta pay attention, bro. Uh anyway. Next up, we get Riley Osborne versus Ridge Holland. Um, man. Uh, hold on. Don't let's care. get the let's get these big topics out the way because that was, oh, that yeah, was def- that's definitely a quick hit. I'm not going to show order because it show stinks. Um, okay. big topic: Dante Chan versus Lexus King. Let's fucking go, baby. Yeah, I saw, when I saw you put that in the main topic, like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Chan gave me the up. main topic. Dante Chen, you get the shit out of here. Chain gang, we up. That didn't make sense. Chain gang is named not Dante Chain. Chain gang, we up. Chain gang. Anyway, um, shout Fire. out to uh. So a- NBA has white Dante, so this is Asian Dante. Um, who's white Dante? To- Dante DiVincenzo. That's white Dante. I have no idea what the fuck that is, bro. He plays. He plays for the Knicks. Oh, He's- that's why I don't know. But um, yeah. When when he was in college, at least that's what I started calling. I started calling him White White Dante. I know um other people have called him White Dante because you don't you don't see a lot of White Dantes. You also see a lot of Asian Dantes of uh, Singapore Pornese Singapore. How you say it? Nah, you tell me. Smart Singaporeanese. <laughs> you tell me, smart guy. What do you call <laughs> Singapore? <laughs> Singaporeans. Sing- Singaporeans. There we go. Come on. That's nice. That's what, what I said. What, what, what Drew McIntyre said about uh geography, bro. Niggas, niggas in the US don't know geography, bro. I know where Singapore is. I'm just saying I didn't know what they call it call them out here. You do not know where Singapore is. Yes, I do know where Singapore is. Don't you try to play no me. Yes, I no do. Idea. It's in fucking China, ain't it? Or next to it. China's a big place. Can you narrow it down? It's we gonna China. have a we 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 gonna have a geo guesser screen. <laughs> it's not China. It's nowhere near China. <laughs> that shit is nowhere near China. We go we gonna have a geo guesser stream, bro. That's not because it's not in China. Yeah, they get on no shit about nothing. But uh, uh moving on. Uh I thought this was great. Um Dante Chan getting big pops like this is absolutely insane to me. Get this shit off my fucking main main topic speed. This shit was nothing. I could what even happened? Dante won, and then Lexus King beat him up after and did the little twisty move on the cement. The twisty move. <laughs> yeah, a little twisty little neckbreaker joint. Yes, that's that's what happened. Uh, moving on, uh, we get Roxanne's next challenger. We haven't seen Roxanne on these shows for quite some time. Um, that was very concerning. Um, she was doing like, backstage uh, stuff. Yeah, and then <laughs> bitching and moaning backstage. Um but this is this was a very cool surprising challenger. Um, there's leaks or not leak, whatever leaks reports whatever saying that it was going to be Tegan Knox. Um, so I had yeah, to, rumors I, of Tegan Knox. I had I had the Tegan Knox tweet in the draft. I was about to say, are you fucking for real? Um, but we get a uh, we get a bigger surprise in Jordan Grace. You impact said you not crossing the line we coming to you nigga bro i i i publicly gave up um impact the impact narcotic on on online a couple days ago and look what happened came right back i could i can't escape it maybe there's nothing to escape bro i i thought i could escape i could escape the impact the impact stench and look but to be fair the stench is crazy to be fair Jordan Grace is one of the highlights of the end. When I was watching Impact, she was a highlight. So, um, yeah, I think I think Jordan versus uh versus um Roxanne gonna be good. I'm I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun. Also, Jordan will be wrestling Stevie Turner next week. 
So mm-hmm. for the first time ever, the TNA women's champion, TN knockout champion will be in a singles match on WTV. This is historic. Yes. Also, um when they show they were when they were showing Stevie Turner on uh on screen, I was just like, who is that? Who the fuck is that? I did not Bl- recognize her. Blonde number 10 on this fucking roster. It's not that. Um I didn't recognize her either. You know what? Because usually her hair is straight. It wasn't straight, it was like curly. That kind of threw me off. Her hair is also, also usually she, in a ponytail. Also, she looked a little bit like like she put more like she got in a negative way, and she looked yeah, like she got she looked a little bit, yeah, she looked like a she put on like put on weight, but not like in a bad way. Like I'm sure it's like muscle, but she looked bigger. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, who's that? And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> uh, it's cool that uh, I think she's cool. So because she's only 27, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's cool for her to be back. Um, all right, next. Uh, Trick Williams, Javon Evans with Sexy Red um, defeats uh, Gallus. The segment prior um, with Sexy Red I found funny. What is it when um, was, uh, what's that again? Uh, Javon Evans <laughs> he tells Sexy to wait and she does like cook. So I'm out. <laughs> you know the uh Oh man, you know that video of a dude just standing still, but he's like in mid walking motion, and the camera yeah. like pans. Yeah, she kind of like did that, <laughs> and I don't know. I thought that shit was funny. Um, but yeah, no, nah, uh, that shit cool. We got a rare Gallus team up with uh, what is it? Coffee is Brothers. That, yeah, it's actually rare, coffee, rare coffee. We're Wolf Gang. I don't know. That guy I'm surprised that he wasn't there. Um, the, the rare coffee brothers wake up. Yeah, this match was fun. It was a very standard tag match. Javon got the heat on him, and then Triple in for the hot tag. Sexy Red got involved in the finish, stopping Joe Coffee from cheating, which gave mm-hmm. Javon the opening to attack Joe Coffee on the outside. Trick Williams gives Mark Coffee the knee. Win. Very basic tag match. And yeah, that was kind of it, man. Yeah. Um, y'all know how I feel oh. about Gallus, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have much to say. This is, you know, uh, it's a really standard tag match, and Gallus lost. And that's fine. <laughs> fine with me. Let's have them lose more often and then possibly no longer on the show. Um, Ideally, post match, though. Yes, the post match was very, something yeah, that was he, very interesting. I didn't. What? This is something I didn't see coming. I didn't. This didn't even cross my mind that this would happen. Mm-hmm. Normal. I don't know why. No, I'm just like, like I knew, like I knew, um, Ethan Page had left AEW, but I never like cr- thought my cross my mind like, oh, WWE would just sign him. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah, because I it should have, it should have, but it didn't. Definitely, when he got like released, I was just like, "Damn, back to MLW, this nigga go." <laughs> yeah, I thought he like, yeah, MLW or maybe back to Impact or something. I was like, "Oh yeah, he, he's done." Like, I, I not, nothing in my mind thought WWE was interested in them. So that was a really a really interesting surprise to have him come out. Mm-hmm. Also, I, be the one who who had attacked Noam Dar. Mm-hmm. I thought this was a very interesting. Um, course correcting now that uh since Noam Dar is hurt again. Um also I, I also like that um I know that uh what is it Joe Coffee uh, has already got like a North American title match or whatever but like this has stopped um this stops Gallus from being the big bads again, and then also this face turns um metaphor. They're no longer heel, so I think that's also really great. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to say that just yet. He still might. Be, they still might be heel. I don't think it's, it can make this is an opening for a face turn, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're faces. 
I think they're going to, I think this is going to result in a face turn. I mean, like just last week, they were still healing. Like there was no kind of like even kind of. Well, yes, last week, but we just had something that changed that this week. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a face turn. It could be. I think the face turn is imminent. Um, plus, what is it? You know, I'm Darby and Russell and this nigga all, <laughs> on Twitter all goddamn day uh, since last night. Said that they got <laughs> you telling me a substitute teacher took me out. <laughs> Cook that nigga. Um, e- Ethan, pa- I'm interested in Ethan Page because we didn't look. He came into AEW with a lot of fanfare. A lot of people was talking, yeah, about how great this guy is, and then he kind of came. In, AEW didn't. I mean, he kind of got a chance, but not really. Now he's gonna have a chance, so we'll see. Also, he in the promo on his phone, he said he's not signed yet, even though Sean Ross Sapp or Corey Brennan, one of them said that he is signed. I don't know if it's KP. I'm that. assuming. I'm assuming he's signed. He's trying to play the whole. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a wild card free agent. You can't stop me or whatever. But we know he's signed. Who we, we fooling? I hate when they do that. Can they not stop doing that? <laughs> Allegedly, he's Cody's boy too, so he's he's good. Uh, okay. We can't all be Cody boys. You feel me? I mean, he only, he got he only got a couple. He got is him. It's uh, Arn Anderson. It's DDP. It's Ricky. I think MJF one of his boys, but MJF be doing his own thing. I don't think that's his boy. <laughs> you think that's his boy? No. MJF, that's his man. No, he, I think MJF is his uh, man. Probably would have. Oh, well, never mind. MJF I just remember I, I just remember some info that was told to us. Um hey, he put I mean Cody put him on. I mean, yeah, you're gonna drop any. That was that was Cody signing. That was not a, a that was Cody. Remember when he when mm-hmm. he had him on the all in card? No one knew who the fuck MJF was during all in. I would Take us, take, take me back to where we didn't know who the fuck this nigga was. Um, but yeah, Ethan Page, I think this is a interesting signing. Um, he is he is a Gargano guy. Like Gargano is one of his boys. I believe they used to tag uh, together in Evolved. Um, mm-hmm. So. I mean, we could probably be seeing something uh, that's extremely beneficial for uh, NXT. And honestly, at first I was just like, really? We we going to do this shit with this nigga? But if not him, then who? So. She cool me, man. Any other thoughts? No. Okay. Quick hits. Uh, women North American qualifiers. We already talked about Meechan defeating Tatum Paxley, and then uh, Kalani Jordan defeated Win Sinclair in I what I felt was a terrible match. Um, <clears throat> I know that the I know that the call the combine was kayfabe. What you telling me that Win Sinclair is like? She she athletic like that because I ain't see it. I think she's on the bottom, to be honest, in the standings. If I'm not mistaken, I thought it was only just like the top girls, it like, like it the top, it like top twelve. She was like the bottom of the top, the top twelve. I don't know, I don't know how many people were like in the fucking competition, but mm. in kayfabe, she was like at the bottom, I think, or something like that. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. matter. She, <laughs> she not it, girl. Yeah, this match is uh, not great. Um, I don't know if it's like the lack of chemistry between her and um, Kalani. Kalani. No, I, just think, I just don't think they're they're good. <laughs> I don't think either of them are that good. Um, Kalani, she still needs work, and Rinsa Claire is just not good. Mm-hmm. That is the assessment that I'm also walking away with. Uh, they need some work. Um. Rich Holland uh, losing to Riley Osborne, and it seems like he's going to be the catalyst for more Chase U uh, strife. I'm over it. 
Yes. I'm uh, over Chase U. I'm definitely over Ray Jalen. My thing is, is that I'm not over Chase U, but I'm slowly starting to get over Chase U because seeing uh, Chase U results in me seeing Rich Holland. I'm over Chase U. That, we're done with this. Either call these guys up, break them up. I don't, I don't it's not necessary anymore. I'm over it. I have TAL do something else. Also, DL, just another woman that's doing shit much better than the dudes around her. Like, yeah, she's the only one interested in that group. Riley's boring. Andre Chase is, I mean, like, Chase and I feel like Chase and Duke are like barely even there anymore. <laughs> they're like just there. They're like, you know what I mean? Like, they're not even like, mm-hmm. I remember the last time Andre Chase even did it, had, had like a real promo for real. When he's had a match for real, now he just be sending other niggas that do matches. Yeah, he ain't even. Yeah, I think he's in his kind of his player coach bag. I think he's more like low key a trainer over there now. He's older because he, I mean, the Bravado brothers, they're like what? Damn. Oh, no, there she is. Because I remember, I remember the Bravado brothers when I was like in college. That nigga already hanging it up and he ain't, uh, he ain't even get like a massive injury and no shit. Oh, he's only 35. Wow, he's young. Okay, he's only 35. Wow, I thought he was older than that. Okay, he's only 35. Yeah, I don't know. Shit weird to me, man. Um like pushing 40. The OC defeats uh Idris and Nofe, who story is is that they have bad luck. Boot them. I'm I'm sure there are other jobbers uh back there. These guys uh it ain't working. Also, y'all never gave them a team name, so. Y'all ain't never really committed. Y'all, ain't, y'all wasn't really fucking with him. I've already said my piece about this guess. Um, and then it's going to be Axiom versus the OC at Battleground. I hate the OC. Oh. Lola Vice and Ariana Grace. I thought the promo that they had backstage was very funny. But um, the match, I mean, it's Ariana Grace. So she did what she normally do. You'll never make me not love Ariana Grace. I don't care how bad her matches are. How slow I'm, she wrestles. I, I wasn't I wasn't gonna make you turn on her, bro. Not you, just, not you, just in general. Uh, <laughs> I'll never I'll never let her go. That's cool. Hey man, that's cool with me, man. We we all got her our, our famous, bro. I'm not letting yeah, you well, I don't know why well. the Discord I don't yeah. know why the Discord gas in the Izzy Dame. I don't get that. Am I missing something? They think she's sexy, bro. That's it. I don't get what I don't I don't know what they're seeing. Um, yeah, that's a funny match that happens. Uh, and then no core to catch crew. Um, they are rebrand. Oh, well, they're restructuring how they do their thing. Now they're going to start doing, we're going to start doing stuff mafioso style. And I was just saying, neither of you niggas are Italian. Well, no, I think it was more so. I think it was just like, uh, what's the old boy's name? Um, what's Regal's kid's name? I can tell I'm getting sleepy. I'm forgetting people's names. Charlie Dempsey, he seems like he's the leader now. This kind of way, that's what that promo gave me. Like, oh, I'm the leader now. We gotta wow. establish this. We need a leader in the group. We can't be just three guys doing shit. Which I agree. I I agree with that assessment as well. Like they they need something more. Um, yeah, that's cool with me. Yeah. Uh, them finally establishing what they're doing. The family, the family is going to be reviewing the the so uh, the catch clause, and yeah, let's review that. Let's stop doing that. I don't think the uh, family needs to do that. No, um, I don't really. I guess like, I mean, if it sets up a swerve where it's going to be like, oh, we're going to get like somebody like completely off the wall to like actually fight by our side like we're gonna pay like Ilya Dragon off to like do this shit for us like I think that'd be very funny I don't uh, uh, did they did they imply oh, that they're doing the catch the catch claw are they did they no, imply no, no. that they they just told uh Lucifino to look into it but you know what would be really funny what they reviewed the catch claws and it'd be like it's not gonna be me bro and then Giovanni Giovanni Vinci come out oh shit we might well throw him in the fucking family. Fuck it. He ain't gonna get no time on SmackDown. <laughs> I think I think that'd be cool. 
Maybe that he does some bitch in there. I mean, why not? He Italian. He's really Italian. <laughs> well, he really from Italy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he really, he really from there. I was, I was like, why you said it like that? Like, <laughs> like everybody else fake it, fake Italian, nah, bro. He, you know, he like really from, really from the homeland, from the motherland. He from Thousand Italy, Italy. I don't know where that got, is. You got three thousand people in it. Real tight knit community. Feel me. <laughs> it, looks, it looks beautiful, low key, it's like around these big old like hills and just like it's like a farm, like a church. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be cool. Do yeah, shit, dude, probably got one pub. You gonna call him a bum, bro? No, nah, I'm not. Calling, I'm saying probably got, like one bar in there. Ain't shit have to do. Big ass. I don't know field. where. Oh, we found wrestling at. Did Italy have a scene? I feel like there's a lot of like places that have like an unexplored scene. Like, what's the Italian wrestling scene? Like, I, like if you think if you think about it, there hasn't been a lot of, like actual like not Italian American, but like just Italian wrestlers. Hey man, how many have there been? NXT Florence, bro. Lock in. Yeah, what's up with NXT Japan anyway? Fuck that. We're going to. Uh... NXT Santorini. Santorini. <laughs> that wouldn't be fire. Um, but okay. That's it for us. I thought this episode of NXT was fun, but like in ring. Yeah. Uh so that's our show. You can subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the A Show RNC. You can follow us, uh follow the A Show. Um, at the A Show RNC, you can follow Quan at the Comeback Spot. You can follow me, Cyrus, at Cyrus One TWR. Um, links are in the show notes. Uh, this episode will be uploaded to YouTube if YouTube is more of your jazz. Um, also, the A Show, uh, the Z Show, my fault. Um, mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys have a nice night. Uh, join the Discord. It's only $20. That'd be really fun. Uh, we need more people. Uh, I said we got like 70 niggas in there already, but like we got uh, a lot of niggas know. in there. I was like, we need more people. <laughs> we got enough. <laughs> please let's don't get please this part though. Let's let's get 200 more. Lock in with us. Um, uh, but yeah, all right. That is it from us. <laughs>